March 26th. And um, just remind us all, the board, that at 7 o'clock, uh, Cynthia Copeland, Executive Director of SRPC, will be here. Uh, she is re uh, retiring, but she wants, she's doing, sort of doing a farewell tour, I guess, and uh, talk to us about some various and All right, approval of minutes. Mike and Denise, if you're good with them, I will be good with them. I'll make a motion to accept. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we just do it by consensus. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So, which leads me to something, which I meant to bring up last week. Mm -hmm. So, so four items that are sort of not non-purchase orders, non-financial, non-contracts. We just, they're just three of us, so it's easy to just say. And there are no, no RSAs that say you have to do Robert's rules. So, minutes is by consensus, adjourning is by consensus, okay. and some of the other things, you know. Sorry, I meant to say that last week, and I simply forgot. All right, community input. Yes. Bring. Yes. Um, I had been speaking with someone recently, and they said their daughter works in a store, and every time they go to the store, they ask for the email address. And of course, that people don't always give it or whatever. But his thought was perhaps we could have an opportunity when people come up to do town business that we could ask them if they would like to be receiving the town emails and to give them a little slip of paper to show them how to do it, how to sign up. And it, I think it might have been done in the past, but it would really be helpful because he said that's how he found out about them. And um, a lot of people do, but there are an awful lot of people that aren't on it. So that might be an idea that we could think about. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, it, that's a good point. I think when we first made, that was one of the first things that I worked on mm -hmm. when I was on the board. And so we had a concerted, I say we, there was a concerted push to try to get people on it. And we did, we handed those slips out, the town clerk handed them out. And, and it seemed like it was sort of a critical mass, but it's always a good idea. I'm thinking if we would continue that, and that way people who've forgotten or whatever yep. would be able to be reminded that that was... Well, the remind, I mean, if you sign up for the emails, you're getting them, so, you know... Well, I know I'm getting them. <laughs> yeah. Isn't but there a purge, though? Well, not, I mean, not like an intentional one, but didn't some folks get knocked off for a while or something? Not intentional. I mean, no, just, I'm not aware of that. <laughs> I think that they... <laughs> I know, so like I hit it. a button once that it was the wrong button, and I was trying to do something, and all of a sudden said, "Oh, so you you really want to be removed from the list?" And that happened to me a couple times, and I didn't realize it right away, and then yeah. I got back Gosh, on. But yeah, I mean, it, it, that's what's nice about it. It's a, it's a self, you know, you manage it. So if you and if you want to get the things weekly, you can as a digest or something. If you want to get them as they come out, you can. So it gets us out of the business of trying of having to manage that ourselves. So that part is good. And I think I asked Tia to look at, and the answer has come back, well, no, you can't really do it, to, to sort of have uh, maybe tiered levels. Like, I want everything. Mm -hmm. I want just the town municipal stuff. <coughs> I want community, you know, community events. Mm -hmm. well, if it's too difficult right now, maybe we can't do it. Maybe we can look forward to that part in the future. But the issue getting people to sign up. Is, that right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So. yeah, I think the service that she uses it's not conducive that. to that. We so we tried to do that in the past. I mean, I think it's fine to you just put a sign up at, or like well, a I flyer up at the a front flyer, office. But I think you should give them something, something and a little. Well, we can. We, can we have we have little pieces of paper, so we can you know we can sort of do that again at the town clerk's office problem. and have a mirror. Right. I think that would be a good yeah, idea. Yeah, we do that. We just make note of that. Thank you. We have someone at town meeting. A couple of people at town meeting. I mentioned they hadn't gotten emails, and we said, well, you could sign up. You have to opt in. Yep. And is it appropriate for me to ask about the committee for the management thing? Of course it is. Yes. So, go ahead. Do um, you want to say something? I or? would like to be appointed. I knew that. Um, I would wonder who you would like to appoint today. Well, we understand that uh, you have voiced your interest. Kathy Lamb has voiced her interest. We have uh, so Dean Ehawk has voiced her mm -hmm. interest. And I, I don't know I don't, well, I can tell you. If you give me just a moment. Let's hear it. It's So those, uh, but Sheila Riley. I think I'd like to have three would be good if we could have no more than three if we do a point. Well, if we do four, we have to do five. That's right. the kind of That's way it was written. So. So. Yep, and I've set up a folder mm -hmm. uh, like I have for other, even though this is ad hoc, you're going to want a repository. 
That's correct. And so it's on Google Drive. I'll, as soon as we appoint, I'll send a notice out to everybody, create an email distribution list mm -hmm. so that you can communicate to one another, leave documents. And I'm starting to put documents there for things that I've done. Thank you. So, for example, I have, um, you know, I had this one sheet thing at town meeting that had a tax rate comparison. And it said, out of all these towns, so many had a, a town administrator, town manager. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got the detail behind that. So the detail actually has the town's name uh -huh. and, and <laughs> information nice. like it's full time, it's 20 hours a week. To the extent that I saw it, you know, whatever I was looking at, I was looking at <coughs> websites, uh, municipal <coughs> association. Okay. So that's there. Then I've taken, I, I couldn't download uh, the, the, the technology they use. Obviously, it's not compatible with whatever technology I'm using. So, I, yeah. So, so I've taken uh, snapshots of the town manager salaries. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's there, and I'll do the same for the town administrators. Mm -hmm. So at least you can look at it if you want to compile it and put it in a spreadsheet. If you can. Okay, thank you. All right. So, so that's we're not going to do this until later on this evening, right. and we'll let everybody know. You know, hopefully uh, this week. So you can get started. Thank you. So, so where is that folder on Google Drive? Yes, there's a folder okay. called Boards and Committees. Okay. All right. Just and it curious. has all of our, and it's, uh, they're actually open to the public because they have minutes and agendas. So if you want a working document where you may not want to have that one open up, just let me know. We can put one that's just. Okay. Because we may need that. Yeah, just for kind of in process. Yes, that's, but, that's what I was saying. Yeah, but that's where all the minutes, that's where we put the minutes, the agendas, mm -hmm. the everything. So, you know, if people want to see them, they can just, and we don't have to do anything. It's, it's lovely. Just, it's lovely. It's wonderful to get a little, inch a little bit closer to <laughs> present times. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Tamara. I am here. We've been talking at the library. I am now officially an elected library trustee. You are. Congratulations. And um, it has come up a couple of times that we would like to offer a uh, cooperative effort with you all to bring some transparency to the videotaping of the meetings. Um, the library director has offered to manage that process. And I know I've brought this up in the past to previous boards. Um, I actually started recording meetings about seven years ago, and I did it by myself for about three years, and then I, I couldn't sustain, I didn't have the stamina that you all have <laughs> to sustain it, um, and then I did it again for a little while, um, always hoping to bring transparency to the community. So now that the boards actually, many of them have a paid secretary, have a what? A paid secretary, so budget. Your board and planning board all have a town employee who take the notes and manage the minutes. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I thought, you know, what I had suggested in the past is that we we have a camera. There's a system. The secretary comes in, turns the, turns it on, records the meeting, and then it will go to the library and get loaded onto a town managed site that would be accessible to. The current situation, as we all know, is not available to everybody, and there are no checks or balances on whether or not the videotapes are doctored or edited, so it would be nice if we had our own set. And when I brought it to you in the past, I've said, you know, a lot of communities, Dover, everybody around us, that's how they do it. They, the town actually <coughs> manages and owns the situation, and then it's the official version of what is happening in the meetings. I think the response to it and how people have become more informed and involved has it's proved it's that's a needed and wanted thing. Um, and I just I think it would be nice if we finally brought that over and the board of library trustees are in favor of having the library support that process yes, yeah. and have the library director be the person who is taking the data off of the mm -hmm. camera and loading it onto either a Vimeo channel or I would prefer Vimeo than YouTube, and I think Vimeo, you can get a public channel for $80 a year. So what would be helpful is for the library trustees to present a proposal to us okay. that says, here, you know, here are the capital costs, the, the uh, recurring costs, here's how it will work, so that, so that we know what 
financial resources, what human resources, and that would... So the only cost that I can foresee would be to subscribe. And the reason you would want to do Vimeo is because there's no advertising on Vimeo. It's just a clean, mm -hmm. you know, location for... Well, you used to have more storage ability. More, I don't well, know you if can, you can, you know, You can do that however you want. Yeah. Um, the problem with YouTube is you, you get a lot of ads fed into it, and there's other stuff down the margin, and it's you can you can make a really nice official page if you do it with Vimeo. So I use it with a lot of the people I work with. So the library uh, director, we, the trustees have already voted to support this idea and go forward with making an official plan to you once you said you wanted to. I didn't want to do it without you saying you well, wanted let's, it. Well, let's check it, because I was just okay. me speaking, okay. so I can use my very for it, yes. Well, yeah, entertaining a proposal. Oh, cool. yeah. proposals. And then I think it should have, you know, capital recurring costs, you know, the human resources like yeah, we want the to know all that. So, mm -hmm. so okay. anything else that, that you might want to see in that proposal? So how would would you have a link on our, on the town website that will bring you to yes. that? Okay. That would yes. be the plan. See, okay. Yeah. And 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 in addition to the town having that, the library would also have it. So the Vimeo piece would belong to the town, but the library would then be able to promote that as well and share that with everybody on their resources and make that known down in the library that that's going to be the official place where these things get reported. And if we do, um, you know, budget, school board, planning, and BOS, um, you know, those are the majority of the meetings that people really care about. I'm not completely sure why other meetings get recorded. Isn't there something on the, uh, <coughs> there something on the town page now that says, it's not up to date. It's it's basically the ones that I used to record. Yeah, it's not bringing you to the. And since I haven't done it in a while, and the other one is mm -hmm. uh, controlled by people who don't let everybody see it, it's not a uh, you know a reliable source for the town to be using. So Tamara, one thing that that occurs to me is that you uh, list the the meetings. Uh, that you know, three of them are here in yep. this room, and one is elsewhere. So, some thought about <coughs> equipment and equipment. I think the other thing I think the other thing we would do is, I mean, obviously, I think I think we should we should have a camera that belongs to the town. That probably be the easiest. Yep. Keep it here. Have it locked in the cabinet. All the secretaries have a key. They can open the cabinet and do it. Um, it literally takes like two minutes to set it up and two minutes to take it down. Anything that people need to be taught, I, I can certainly teach them, and they won't need to learn the difficult part, which is like, how do I uh, how do you transfer it and put it on the video? Because the library will take yeah. care of that part. So it'll be really yeah. pretty simple. Excellent. It, put a, have a little training section so absolutely. that we know how, who's going to... And I'm, yeah. you know, I'm, if somebody has a problem, I'm around, I can run down and help. But the other piece is at the school board, I, I can speak to the school, I will go and speak to the school board on, on behalf of library trustees as well. Because another thing that I want is for, on some of these things, for I, after what went on this last, you know, round, I really, we really need to be cooperating and working together more and be trying to do those types of things that benefit the town Absolutely. more collaboratively. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really disturbed by what went on this last round. So I will go to the school board as well as a library trustee and present this whole idea. So we would have our own set of equipment, they would have theirs. Yes. Okay. And, and what I will but say... the process would be the same. Exactly. All the we will, will, we, they will, their, you know, memory card or camera will come down get hooked up at the library. And, and actually, I think two people that are on the school board are actually friends of the library as well. So they're on the friends board. So they would be able to, you know, have that connection to the library too. Sounds like a camera. great plan. Okay. So I'll write something up for you Beautiful. and bring it back and, and present it to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Any other community input? All right. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. I just have one up in a swig of water. Okay. <laughs> one public item. Um, I'm recommending to the board that we change the locks on the two doors that are going to be select coming into the uh, town clerk, mm -hmm. tax collector's office, as well as changing the lots on the two doors that go into the select board's office, as well as Caroline's. Okay. Uh, are those separate sets? Yeah, there'll be separate sets. Now, we're recently, we, we recently found out that um, some keys open more than one set of doors. 
So in order to, to make sure that we have 100% security here, I'm recommending that, that we do that. I think it's a good idea. Oh, we've also heard that there that are just stuff. keys out there yeah. that, that we're not even familiar with or aware of. So I think, and, and can I, sorry, can I, I just, so once, once we have this in place, we now have, at least that's, uh, we now have a plan so that we know who has keys exactly. and you manage this on our behalf. Exactly. So the fact, so having keys out in the community will not. Will no longer exist. Okay. Oh, absolutely. So when you try to get into the select board, or the, you have to have a key and the key, um, magnetic the white thing, right? they have to have both, or just the key will let you no, in? No, the key will let you in. Okay, so the you can do either or. Correct. Okay. Okay. Correct. okay. I usually just use my magnetic card. Yeah, it's easier. It's easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. It's easier. Okay. But I wasn't sure if you yeah, had to have both. Well, the key okay. would also work in, so. Yeah, okay. You need to have no that's true. Good yeah. point. I, All used right. to, I, I don't actually even have a physical key. I think I gave it back to you because Caroline needed one, maybe. Or? We needed we needed one. Yeah. We didn't have a spare, so I don't even I don't even have a physical key. No, so that would be nice. Well, yeah. finally have a key in case of power. Goes. Okay, so I purchased order number one three six nine to ABC Lock and Key to uh, to do to rekey four doors for three hundred dollars. And that will come out of the town hall maintenance account. We purchase order number 1369 to ABC Lock and Key for $300. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Yeah, how are we supposed to do it now? We're just saying the, the number and who has two, we're just saying the number. I've already mm -hmm. forgotten to turn the number. Well, I, if, so if, if somebody. We don't have to repeat everything that, exactly. that was just said. Yes, okay. exactly. And if you need something from this, we can just. Something more. Yeah. Nice idea. Do we need to take action on this thing while the chief is here too? We can ask for about it. Initially, yes. Do you do you want to talk about this with us? Yes. All right. In non-public. In non-public. But there's something else in non-public you can address with us. That's the only thing that I have for public. Do you have anything coming? Uh, no, so. no, I'm just so. And did the personnel should, both of them too? Yes. Okay. It shouldn't take more than five minutes. Okay. Um, all right. I'll move to the donor non public session to deal with the personnel matters. Personnel matter. Yeah, second. Second. All right. Yes. Yes. Suzanne, yes. There's no, uh, there's no action taken. George, you ready? Yeah. Hmm? How are you this evening? It hasn't for a few days. Mm -hmm. A few months. Yeah. A few months will be nice. Can you watch for that? It's my vacation schedule. Oh, yes. Is there one for everybody? Very good. Denise is not aware of this. We, we, we are. So, all right, so... George is going on vacation. Excellent. Good for you. And Ed's going to have the town phone for the available call. All right. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Any questions or comments somewhere. on that? Warm and pleasant. Uh, Hawaii. Me too. Oh, we I it does. Well, a couple of days. I'll be there on the 25th. Going. How do we do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah.
this is truck that they can, they'll have for us. We have a radio already in, on hand the TV gave us, so we won't be adding anything to the, We might have to take a little out to the letter. But uh, everything else on the truck we should have available okay. at that price. Are there compromises you're having to make because of... One of this particular truck, he's doing, this one's going to be red, black, keep the color. I mean, we can get one for 39000 all white. And then, you know, this is got the utility bodies being sprayed with line X to protect the... All right, so you're not having to compromise on the functionality. No, nope. okay. the, the thing is, they give us a state bid. The truck has a little bit few more options than you would be in a regular state bid truck, right. and that they're making it work. Okay. But they are giving us a state. You know, it is a okay. state bid price. And that is that includes the plow. The plow, the utility body, the line X on the okay. you know and tow package is part of it, and everything else. So. Okay. So that is. On the Warren article number six. Yep, so you can give it to Denise when she can read it all. Move to accept purchase order 1111, Bill Duby Ford, 2008 Ford F250. For? Oh, $41,999. I had a couple others that were a second, let's talk about it. All right. I had a couple others that were under that were higher. Yeah. And he said they could bring them down. And one of them was already built at middle up at the crazy holes. Okay. However, it didn't have the line X right, you know, right. protection and stuff. They, 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 they were going to be added on. Yeah. Add, adding extra stuff afterwards, which we <coughs> to deal with. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask. So the, the white truck, um, the, that bit, does that, okay, is that the state price? Does that also include the, the plow package? And it did. It did. I mean, it didn't have the Linux. Okay. And so you start adding. I mean, this that price was thirty nine to forty four. Okay. I mean, I, I do what you, you know. So we would get we would get very close then with all the other. What does Linux go for? Yeah. What does Linux go for? I mean, Linux is almost a thousand dollars when you do it over top of the body and stuff. It's good at the body. I mean, white. I, I was just trying to say with the color of the fleet, and that's. I want to ask, because yeah, yeah. it was a comparable truck, but I mean, if this... I mean, all of them, they're all coming in 42, 44. Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, I... Okay. Keep looking. And, and we can take delivery of this one. This will be a month out. A month out. I get the stuff put on it. Okay. It's better than the police car. Yes, yeah, the police car is, what, six or... Yeah, we have to wait for them off months the months assembly months. line. Yeah. We have to wait for them to run. These Chevrolet is not building... A regular cab pickup truck for the year 2019. So that would be two years out on a GM product. Uh, on a regular cab. We've been uh, having fair, fair luck with the Ford. Right, and uh, Ford's after my second could not order any, they're not going to be ordering anything for state bid price until at the end of the summer. Right, so we all strike now and we're not there. And they're not sure what the pricing is going to be on the vehicle. So. Okay. All right. Then we'll you ready? Yeah. I got a public question. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Yeah, that's a truck work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing all that blood work. And uh, it's a 250. Is that what it is? Is that what it is? Yeah, 250. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the base price without anything, right. any add-ons. Yeah. Uh, and PO for like account number 4312707 had to buy a set of tires for the front of the international like one tire was supposed to implode on this left wheel. And you mean that literally? I explode, you mean? Yep, the uh, bead from the weight of the wing was breaking and the tire started coming off the rim. But we're still holding air. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately. Okay. Move purchase order number 11110 to sell of tires for $1,261.60. Did you get it? Okay, she needs to do that. Hold on a second. Oh, second, I'm sorry. All right, Michael has to. Do we typically get tires to go over? Mm -hmm. 
and sell it at the truck places in Italy. I got and that's the state bid price. That's where we go. Up, or the front. That's right. Okay. Small we did not have a spare on hand, so I had a. That's why there's, there's a service charge in there for them coming to do the work at the shop. Oh, so you couldn't, couldn't even get it over. But now we have a spare because I had to order two ribs. Fair enough. Ribs okay. seventy-six dollars a piece, so I figured. That's better than trying and to. And they've been on both trucks. Get to Lee and have some blow and. Uh, I wouldn't have drove that truck though. That yeah, you know, fair enough. After seeing it. Did okay. you get everything? So. Mm -hmm. All right, so I have a purchase order for twelve hundred and sixty-one dollars and sixty cents. All those in favor say aye. 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 Sharp does one thing, I just sign them. I just call them out and I sign them. <laughs> I have a PO that was second page was missing. I asked about stop signs a while back. Yes, you did. And that was what was signed off on. Right, because we were going to wait and then you had. We wanted to wait till after the budget was. Right, budget pass, and then you came up with this other plan. And this was the other plan. This is the other plan. This was to reface the stop right. sign versus. Okay, so. I don't have a back page, so. Well, we'll just say that there's no copy, and Caroline will figure it out. She's, she'll, she'll take care of that. I'm going to hand this one to you. She might have it. She might have it. She might already have it. Sorry. Um, purchase order 0989. First word is something science, what is it? Econo science. Econos, okay, science. For nine hundred dollars even for some refaced stop signs. Yeah, we'll be facing how they actually be refacing the last Yeah, could you could you explain that? Because I, I don't think Denise was here when Yeah, yeah, it actually the stop sign face. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be the more visible facing of the stop signs. And we're gonna do a instead of buying a whole stop sign, mm -hmm. we're saving about a third. Or have we budget like a couple of thousand dollars for this. So the the feds uh, are quite a while ago. Quite a while ago. <laughs> We're trying to come up to standards, mm -hmm. reflective, whatever it is, whatever the standards are. Standards. And so rather than getting a whole new stop sign, George found this approach where he can mm -hmm. cover what, what, what is there with like his yep. reflective sign. And in fairness okay. to past row agents, agents, not just the last one, but agents, the, one of the first things that gets rated. Every year when we have to, if, we, if something happens, there's always the sign <laughs> fun. So oh, we, had to, we had to move things around oh, at, yeah. at, at yeah. the transfer, I mean, at, at the highway, if we need more yes. money for something there. Yeah. It always comes out a sign. So thank you, George, All for right. So <laughs> did you move it? I did. And then Michael seconded. Yeah. Any other questions or comments of George? So this will cover all of our stop signs in Tanner? Yes. Awesome. That's yeah. very cool. It's actually going to happen this year, Michael. What do you think? All right, I'll call, the in, yeah. so. I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. I think they want the um, street signs too, right? Like the, the names of the aren't they supposed to be changed to whatever? We're going to shoot this. Yeah, the street sign is bigger now, I think. Oh, right. So you can see it from a distance. Yeah. It'll just be another three to five minutes. Yeah. Why is the information on your roads? Yes, but we have we can't do that. In public, because that's proprietary information. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. And actually, he's going to have to retype one to the end and say, "Maybe." So I can hold on. I can give them to you. Yes, maybe you can give them to us, and then we'll we'll look at them and. Is it, yeah, do you, is it worth, it won't take us long. Why don't, why don't we do it? That way, you're here, you're here, here, here so let, it, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. For a contractual contract. Yeah, guys, I'll move to a better non public session to deal with a contractual issue. Second. Roll call, Michael. Yes. 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 So I'm supposed it really won't take five minutes. Sorry, thank you for your patience, Cynthia. Please come on up. Do you know all of us? I know you know the. Do you know Michael? No. I don't think we've, we've never actually met. I'm sorry. So, uh, Cynthia, so thank you. Thank SRP. you. See, this is our newest board member, Denise Knowles. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Stephanie, how are you, Michael? Stephanie, yes. Hi, Stephanie. I was, yes. Nice to meet you, Denise Knowles. Nice to meet you. Well, congratulations on your momentous decision.
It's a big one, I know, <laughs> having gone through it myself. Stephanie, are you with yeah. a PH or an F? An F, actually, thank you for asking. And I didn't catch your last name. Casella. And you, when you do what at SRPC? I am a data collection assistant. Oh, I love data. <laughs> I'm a big data fan. <laughs> yeah, so I thought tonight we could talk about what, primarily what um, stuff does, and so we're out here for me to say it's part of the farewell tour. Yes, <laughs> that's, how, that's how I built it. I built it as Cynthia's farewell tour, and thank you so much for 19 years. So, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, I've been here almost 19 years, and so uh, it's the end of several decades of public service. And, so I just wanted to come out and say thank you to everyone, how much we appreciate your support and membership. And um, we've worked on a lot of projects. I know I was, I remember I worked on the historic resources chapter of the master plan. Oh, and so yeah. that was really fun. And we've done um, various master plan projects. And, yeah, Kyle's been very um, helpful. Water issues and... Um, yeah, I have a little list to kind of review okay, with you too. Okay, so. so, so I have covered <coughs> traffic counts, RSMS, and <coughs> byways, and then I thought I saw that you said no, you weren't going to do the census thing for 2020. Oh, um, what? There, there was a... Do you remember? <clears throat> I'll double check, just to make sure, because you could oh. opt in or opt out, and... If you opted no, in, we would do the work for you. Well, so. somebody came by on on the census, and yeah, I'll check and make sure. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I know I all the issues. Out of yeah, they to do the but. census. So. Well, uh, there's work where you do adjustments and things on streets and counts and huh. just to set it up for yeah. 2020. Okay. And so we do that for communities if they want it. Well, that would be helpful, I think, because. Yeah. Maybe we did look at that and it was too much work, or I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the date's gone by, so I'll double oh. check and I'll have okay. Rachel Mack. Yes. Um, she's our geo, map geo person, right? Yes. Yeah, she's coming to us in a couple of weeks, actually. Oh. We, had a, we had a back on the website to remind people. Yeah, so if you work. want to talk to her about the census, she's the person working on that, okay. so that would take care of that. All right, excellent, thank you. All right, do you want to start? Uh, well... Uh, so, let me start with, with at least one intersection in what you mentioned. That's the road surface management system. So, we had a really good experience with it, with, um, I can't get his name, but that's terrible. Tom. 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 Yes, Tom, and our prior road agent. And we developed a 10-year plan, and um, I, I think we did a good job, and, and we were happy with the tool. And then last, so we did that in 2016. And in 2017, uh, it was being updated, and so we had to push it a little bit into September, and then our road agent resigned. So we didn't do a 27 update, a 2017 update. So we're still working on the, the original plan, which is fine, because... No know, reason to feel guilty, because I have an even sorrier story. Um, all right, <laughs> you tell me your sad tale. Um, so what happened is, um, if you were familiar with T-Square? I am very familiar with T-Square, and I know something's happened. Yes, something yes. happened, and yeah. it's been Because <laughs> I have, I have my stoolies. Yeah, it's been very traumatic, and it's being resolved, and okay. so there's somebody, there's several people now in charge and administering the program, which has been a wonderful program for the road agents and public works, and the town administrators and for us, we've all been able to benefit from it. And uh, so that is up and running again under new management. And uh, okay. so that part's good. And they've got all the courses scheduled. And so that's all of the, you're talking about the uh, Road Scholar program. As yes. Well. Yeah. Yes. It, and they also do work where we intersect with them. And uh, DOT contracts with them to do assessment management, and so the the road surface management system is part of that asset management. Okay. And so what happened was, in all those cross currents that were happening in the last year and a half, um, they decided that that phase two of the forecasting that the model needed to be update updated. So that process was started. And then 
old term. And then DOT had their own about how they were going to do asset management. And after they resolved how they were going to do it, they saw that they had more needs. And so they had to develop additional models, which they worked with um, the, the SAIDS program, if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that. And so we're also part of the SAIDS. So I've had a request in since March of last year to get training for the updated model for the forecasting phase two for the RSMS, and it's still not resolved. And so I put in a, a wish for my my gift, my departing gift, <laughs> which was to have staff and our staff trained, and that didn't go anywhere. And so now we're out to um, April, May, June to get the training. So that's where we're at. And we had an idea that we could call one of the central regional planning and that they would be up to date. And I just talked to the executive director there, and he said, no, they're in the same boat as us. They've been waiting over a year now. So um, that's where it's at. And mm -hmm. so uh, when we do get the training, I'm going to have our staff come with a video camera, and we're going to we're going to film it so that we have it in case we have staff turnover because this is something that the towns like and want mm -hmm. and it's a For program sure. that helps everyone and so makes our dollars go further long term and so it's just good plan it's just wonderful yeah. for us to say look here here's our plan for the roads not that not that in 7 years we're going to do what we say we're doing in 7 years but obviously, you know, this is the this is what we're thinking right. today, and we're going to update it next year, and there may be some changes, virtual, especially in the outer year. So, so it's been very helpful for us to Thank have you. it. So, so if I heard you correctly, we probably are looking at later this summer in order to update it. Yes. So um, th we have a line, and so last summer we thought we'd have this by at that time they had promised in September, the fall. So we did two more towns, and we knew that you also needed to go back in and do the reassessment. And uh, so we have three towns, and I think we're up to four in line, which pretty about maxes us out with our other work for the summer. So um, that's what we're hopeful for. The other changes is that <clears throat> we can do the first phase one and phase two with our our contract monies, and then after that we need to charge the towns because DOT won't accept it after we do the first phase one and phase two for you. So, so I'm not sure that I understand the distinction between phase one and phase, phase two. Phase one is going out and doing the assessment. Of the roads themselves. And phase two is the forecasting. Okay, so, so you would be able to do phase one and phase two this year. Yes. For we, us, yes, at no cost. Well, you, you were our pilot. Yes, we were. So, um, are you Steph, answering the question? I'm not, but I'm trying to tell you that from this point forward, DOT said that we have from to, oh, okay. include from this point being this. After we've done phase one and phase two once, then in the future we have to charge. Which is this summer. Yes. Okay, so and the charge is. Um, it's an hourly, however it takes, and so what we need to do is sit down with you and figure out what roads need to be redone and running, you know, exactly what you figured out from the plan that we put together, what needs to, what's taken a hit, um, where is there unexpected um, road problems that you didn't think were going to happen, and then do we need to reassess those roads? which roads don't need reassessing or could pass and just talking together about this. So if it's an hourly issue, then we could have our road agent sit we could do a pre yeah. we could do a planning session, right? Yes. Our road agent. Because yes. he could he at that point he's new, yes. but he's good. Yes, and he should be he, involved in he, this. Yeah, as our other road agent was before. Yes. So and that will beautiful. help keep that the will, cost. Down. Yes. Yeah. All right. So and we're trying to do this and, working together as a team now. So once we've done the initial um, assessment in phase one and then the forecasting in phase two and then whether you carry it forward into a CIP, then come back 
when, when you say you want to have the reassessments happen, and we'll just do it as a team together. Yeah. So we could. So the, so the forecasting is the piece that that is particularly helpful to us because it gives us some idea of the magnitude of the job. Yeah. Right. So that's. They're trying to make a better model. Yeah. I could see where. Yeah. Yeah. There were some. You know, we could see some. Yeah. Had questions. That's why it was a pilot. <laughs> Yeah, but still, I think immensely helpful. So much better than information that we had up until that time. So, so we were grateful for that. All right. So, so what's the next step that we need to do here? Do we wait to hear from you? Do I keep pounding on your door? Or no. Talk to Stephanie with an app for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just a waiting game right now. Um, we yeah. really can't well, so my concern forward. is that, because this is what happened the last time, we waited ourselves out of the what period in which we could update. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, so, uh, I, I know so you can't, you're not alone. Day, I know. My last day is Friday, but they've asked me to stay on one day a week as the interim, and so I think that'll probably be through April. And so by the end of April, if we haven't got a set date, I think it's important that we have the towns that have been waiting for over a year now send call or send a letter to DOT and okay. tell them they're getting a little frustrated. Because I think what will happen on this end is we'll just use the the structured framework. We won't be able to um, forecast in the same way, but we can at least still have a. It will allow us to plan out the sequence of events and you know which one's the priority. Of our roads and right, it, but I I look at this as we actually would have been able to do this in fifteen, but DOT slowed us down, so we're into our fourth season, and I look at all the costs associated with not doing this and getting the system in place and starting it earlier rather than later. Mm -hmm. So it's rather frustrating. Yes, yeah, I sure I share that. All right, so we will. We should hear something by the end of April, one way or the yes. other. Is that yes? Okay, that would be helpful to us to, to, to know. Okay. Well, we all have to plan because our field season starts in April. Yeah. So as soon as the snow and goes out and the roads. Yes, exactly. Get back to whatever the shape. They're yeah. Be. <laughs> all right. Did you want to talk about um, the covers and traffic counts just in general? Yep, so we just got our um, DOT assignment for traffic counts, and we do have a few in Rollinsford, and I think four that you guys could like, um, you'll be hearing from us by the beginning of May anyways. So when you say you hear from, do you mind my just asking a question? No, when you hear from DOT about traffic counts, that what does that mean? <laughs> so they have a master list of locations throughout the state that they monitor traffic year to year. Um, and so each location is collected on a three-year cycle. So, you know, we did most of downtown Dover this past summer, so we probably won't do that again for another three years. So this is, excuse me, this isn't based on a request we may have put in recently. This is no, just an ongoing... Right. Oh, yep, this is an ongoing, we're contracted by DOT to do these counts. Okay. Um, but on top of that, you guys can request supplemental counts. And... So I think what we're sort of crawling towards is okay. that uh, Portland Avenue is a has been a, a a perennial concern these last five or six years. Safety of Portland on Portland Avenue, yeah, but at least since since right. I've been on the board, I mean, I don't really know how uh, far it goes back. And so we had um, two DOT folks, Bill. And the safety guy, who is Mike Dugas. Dugas. Yes. So Mike Dugas, he's the new in, in, in being head of the safety. Yes. And with Bill, who does traffic. Yeah, it was Cass, no. It wasn't Cass, no. no. Bill's in the front office. Um, uh, it escapes me. He's, yeah, they've but, been moving around quite a bit. But he was the same one who spoke to us about four years ago on Portland Avenue, so he's still oh. in the same position. Okay. Uh, and. So anyways, part of the, the general conversation, we had some folks here who, who uh, are very impassioned about safety on Portland Avenue. We, we cut it down to from 55 to 50 miles an hour 
it's on, you know, it's on the, the plan, and I, I don't, you know, there are too many uh, uh, initials and whatevers, but, but on one of the plans, this, you know, improving safety on Portland Avenue was, you know, was on a plan. And it's, uh, it's, you know, plan is this long, right, and it's, it's down here. So we're not, it's not high on the list. I mean, other things like, you know, 108 and, you know, the Dover overpass or <coughs> on the Spalding Turnpike, and it's understandable, but it, I don't want to say it's frustrating, but how do we, how does a small town like us, who has, you know, zero capacity to try to leverage uh, and use data, because we, we can't, how do we? So, so, Mike, did this came out from the He did, he, and he suggested do a road safety audit, so we got some figures from yeah. Chief Ducharme. Yeah. But. You have to have a fatality. We had one. We had one. one. Is that where the honeymoon is? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And then we had a resident whose son was oh. hurt. Yeah. And the, the supreme and difficult and tragic irony is that it is this family who first brought Portland Avenue to our attention about four years ago. I'm really sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, so there is a highway, so there's, there's the 10-year plan money, which is the federal money. and. Within that money, there's a bucket called highway safety, and Mike's in charge of that. And so they meet, I think, every month or every two months. And Colin, in our office of transportation planner, is now on that committee. So doing an audit is the first step in the process. And so it looks like you've collected your data. We've got some information. Have you sent it in? No. OK, so what's stopping you? Uh, resources, yes, yes. Okay. So yes. what do you need? Uh, someone who can give us the forms, I guess, and sit down with the data. And I mean, you know, we just don't. Um, it's just hard for us to bring something to completion within a an appropriate amount of time. Is really the bottom line because there are just a lot of things to attend to. Okay, so that's a column. Yeah. Okay. That was another thing on my list. Thank you. Yeah, that's a really important one. So, and I bring it up too, just because you know you're the folks who 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 can help bring some of these things about. And so, the more times we bring it up, the closer it is to you know having synapse in there. You know. Right. So what we did was last time. So in uh, we're in an even year. So in the winter of odd years, we do the compilation of projects for the 10-year plan, and then it goes into DOT, and from there it goes out to the Gasset hearings with the executive counselors to the governor, and then in an even year, it's the transportation bill and goes into the legislature. And so we're getting ready to go into the process where every two years we solicit for projects again. So we have this really big list, and so what Colin is saying is we're just splitting it up into into uh, funding baskets. So highway safety is one of those baskets where we can look for projects that shouldn't be just in the 10-year plan. They fit better over in the highway safety, which means they can move faster through the process because there's less of a waiting time for those. And mm -hmm. so um, he's now on that statewide committee. And so he's been working really diligently to get all of the towns that have possible, and usually they're intersections or portions of a road where there's um, been a lot of crashes and fatalities, and moving those forward because they're on a different cycle, and so you can get them into the into the funding cycle faster and not have to wait, you know, ten years out or longer. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would advise you is. Um, to have Colin come talk to you. Yeah, I've got to, okay, I've made that note. Thank yeah. you. I guess that's what we should do. Yeah. Yeah. That's and with your road <coughs> yeah. yeah, and our police chief. Who's yeah. got yeah. Yeah. Yes. And we need the police chief because we have to have the yeah. passions and the fatalities. And we can get, but we, we're having trouble with the data. And so we have another person in our office, Rachel Dewey, who's not Rachel Knapp, but Rachel Dewey. And she's working on. Uh, working with Department of Safety and DOT and the MPOs, the Metropolitan Planning Organizations, to get the problems with consistency of the data. 
forked out so mm -hmm. that it's <coughs> more usable and people are able to just sit down and get the numbers in place and, and move a application forward. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So yeah. that one we can work out, and that's, that's a good one. Still working on my list, or are we on your list? Huh? No, your list. <laughs> can I just add one more thing to the traffic counts? Um, oh, yes. That's, right. that's what got us down this. Thank you, um, If you were interested in having supplemental counts other than, you know, what roads where you've already had safe, road safety audits, we, we do that. And we have new equipment this year that allows us to count information on gravel roads. If you have a road that you're thinking of, you know, paving, or you just want to know how much traffic there is on it, or if it's being used as a shortcut for local or non-local traffic, um, we have radar counters, and those mm -hmm. can measure speed, volume, um, and classifications. Um, they're not as, the classifications aren't as specific as the road tubes that we set up, but it does have that ability. So, but you say that the state is going to be giving you some places to do traffic counts. Mm -hmm. Do you know what they are yet? I have a list on my computer in the office. Okay. I can forward that to just, you. Just like curious. It. I mean, what would prompt us to ask for supplemental traffic counts? I mean, what? So you can look on the on the DOT website, mm -hmm. and it has where they do all the traffic counts. <coughs> and if you're looking at a specific location in town where you're having issues, like crashes, yeah, then you can look to see what are the, tra the traffic counts that have been done will be in place there over multiple years, and so you can open those up and look at the data there, but if there isn't one in the area, you can ask us, can you come out and do an additional count for us? So, for example, Nottingham had us count um, a gravel road that ran in from the back of a bunch of new development to what was it, downtown Epping? Yeah. And they found that there were 500 tri trips a day on that gravel road. Um, so they found that it was being used by, you know, these people in this new development to go straight to Epping, um, where previously it wasn't being mm. used and they had no idea. That's a question. Oh, absolutely. It, this is not just state roads then, this is any road in their town, is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. <clears throat> so we could look to see if, if they're going to do traffic counts on Portland Avenue, and you know, it looks like the, the Portland Avenue Bear uh, Roberts Road intersection would be a you know, I Bear Road would be a very good idea. Yeah. I mean, that seems to be the shortcut for so, a lot of people. Stephanie, I, I, again, I missed your last name. I'm sorry. Casella. Casella. C A S E Next on my list was uh, just, uh, you know, we had talked, the two of us, about uh, contracting out planning services. And as it turned out, we, we retained our uh, person we have been using for planning consultant. But is that still a, a potential service that, yeah. so, and, and how, uh, how, how far in advance do we, I mean, is this something we on, you know, is this something like we need months to work through? We need uh, a couple of months? We need. So, right now we have one person on staff that does um, planning services, and it would depend on whether the nights complement each other. Yeah. So, I used to do this, and, and you know, some planning boards are the second, whatever. And other planning boards are the third, so I think we're the first. Yeah, so if you can work out your schedule and <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm just I'm mostly just yeah. trying to, you know, keep my that is information the, current the, about what we might expect or Yeah, the primary issue is is trying to get people staff lined up so that they can be available for whomever they're they're contracting with at this point in time. If they ask them to go to the Economic Development Committee, and that's another, you know, so evenings fill up, and then we have to patch it in to see how that would work. Yeah. And sometimes we have the capacity 
to do it, but the, the nights overlap each other and it's just not possible. So, um, and it could be that the new executive director has, um, has a planning background and they um, could work in this. Mm -hmm. Like when I first started, I contracted uh, with, I did <laughs> Rollinsford, I did some, and um, Milton, and Medbury, and I was a contract planner for um, North Nottingham for the five years when USA Springs was there. Huh? So I was the planner the whole time oh, USA really? Springs. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we sometimes, the, and the director before me, Steve Burns, also did planning contract. services. Yeah. All right. So we'll just keep that in mind. Yeah. I, I don't know that USA we're... Springs burned me out. <laughs> oh, that was, yeah. It was a little tough. Yeah. Um, so this is a. We, we also do master plan chapters, and so in some communities, like in Barrington, we do those. They do one chapter a year, or one chapter every two years, and um, we used to uh, use our coastal funds to do chapters over a year, or coastal rent, because you're in that, but. The coastal grant has changed what they're emphasizing at a state level, and so we don't have that freedom that we used to have. So, and the money's cut in half. So, you know, the state DES and the coastal program has specific things that we want us they want us to work on. Whereas when we had double the amount of money, we were able to do more mm -hmm. local work. So, okay, fair enough. Uh, the next thing is um, is also kind of a forward-thinking uh, project, and that is that um, on our road surface management system, one of the things that we're going to be tackling after these two developments that are currently aligned is the village. And the village is old. Okay? We're an old mill town, and with some narrow streets and sidewalks that are not standard. And so how... What is the best way to go about trying to plan for this? Perhaps updating sidewalks, or you know, you, you, you know I'm making them wider, or, or not, or what kinds of people should we be looking to to help us figure out? Because we have a few years to think about this. So, have you contacted? Have you done recently um, some kind of strategic plan, or visioning, or something where? Usually when you do your, your master plan, you do a visioning chapter. And um, you could have a component of that that looks strictly at the downtown area. And, um, you know, focus well, on Well, this that. isn't so much on the, like, sort of like, although, I mean, everything's related, but it wasn't so much like economic development or, or this sort the of... Infrastructure it's, part it's, of it. It is, the, well, it's infrastructure. I guess what I would advise is... not wouldn't you want to know what the what seems to be lacking that people would like to have, so that you didn't go off in one direction and people were, oh well, you know we well, could have done actually this. Actually, hear what you're saying. Yes, yeah. what you're saying makes enormous sense. Yeah, because you with want the program. Them to, you want them to buy yeah. in because it's sure. their it's their money. Yeah. And then um, if you if you do a downtown and you want to do sidewalks, then you, you probably want to think about whether you want to go and use the transportation uh, assistance program, which used to be the transportation enhancements program. It's federal dollars and it's through DOT and it's every two years and so um, this summer they'll be doing <coughs> letters of intent and then the applications are due over the summer, and that's where Dover's been doing their, their trail in downtown, and Summersworth has been doing their streets downtown using that program. What's it called again? Um, it's called, the initials are TAU, so it's Transportation Assistance Program. So, uh, so, so actually, I, do, I see exactly the wisdom of what you're saying. Yeah. I was just trying to 
Yeah. I was looking at one little thing, but it really is part of a bigger thing, and it's better to get that. So we did thing. something really interesting um, in 2000 in, in Newmarket, where I live. And uh, the town funded us to uh, help lead a process where people came in to talk about the design standards for what, if, if they were successful with the redevelopment of Newmarket, what would it be like? And so there's a couple of little things there that I remember. And so we had a section on natural resources, and we had a section on infrastructure, and we had a section on funding, and what is it going to look like, and what kind of, but it was all very pragmatic. And so um, just to give you an idea, under the infrastructure section, one of the topics was undergrounding utilities. And the town actually, the townspeople actually wanted the facilities underground, undergrounded, which is more money, but it was a small area that they were going to do. So their their guidance for the town uh, council, their town council was, do it once and do it right. <laughs> and so you yeah. There's things. great wisdom in that. Yes. I also remember they didn't have some little slogan. We ain't pretty, but we're gritty or something. Yeah, like that's that. the next one I was yeah. going to tell you. So they didn't, they really didn't want to look like Disneyland. They didn't want to be pretty just to be pretty. And so their thing was, we're nitty gritty, we're not pretty. That's okay. <laughs> and so those kinds of things, they had five, six, seven consultants come in over time, and they were always given this packet. And, uh, they, you could read through them and they were very simple statements, just very plain, you know, declarative sentences with maybe five, six words. And um, they were, they survived all the consultants and the downtown really reflects beautiful. what the people wanted. Which it's, was it's beautiful. Do it once and do it right. You know, we're on the water, we need access to the water. And you, you have very similar. They had an intact mill. It's pretty nitty gritty. <laughs> I live in the mill, so I know how nitty gritty it is. <laughs> so, but Cynthia, who who helps us with that? I mean, who, so who do you, one, who, one way to do it is Newmarket. So we worked with Newmarket and helped them just sort of start to feel. SRPC. Like, yeah, yeah. What's important to us? What are our values? What do we want to see done here? Because. Infrastructure is a really complex pro process because there's layers in the road and storm you know, drains and yeah fronts connecting off the businesses. Mm -hmm. um, you know how how wide are the sidewalks? What are the materials? Mm -hmm. Who's going to use it? Does it ADA? You know how do you handle that? And so there you're going to need engineering help. You know and we're not engineers, but we help you get those values that people want to yes. see. Yes, who, 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 can we, who can help us if the board so chooses to, to help guide that process and for at least a, the village, you know? Yeah, not, which not, is a smaller it's a area. It's a small area. And intact, too. Yeah, yes. Which is like Newmark, it makes it really important because it's intact. It, yes. It has its historical uh, attachment. And then... So we may end up then, if, if this is what kind of I decide to do this, we may end up putting off our, you know, road work in the village until we get a clearer idea of what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And other thing other I would things say to you is, and this I would bring up the example of Summersworth, is it's really important to think about how you're going to connect to South Berwick, because those are the people that will be using it as pretty much if they're in downtown, they're going to walk across that bridge. Because mm -hmm. I walk in Newmarket, and I, you know, I've been doing it since I moved there. And I have a pretty big loop, and I have multiple loops and twists and turns, and I see the same people all the time. And the more sidewalks they put in, the more people are walking. And in the summer, we're getting people coming from the Boston area to come up and walk and visit. and. Newmarket, and you have very similar qualities. It's amazing to think about, isn't it? Newmarket, yeah. New Hampshire, for somebody who, who is... Well, yeah. Yes, who knew Newmarket 
I know. when she first came to the seacoast, right? Yeah. yeah, so I've been working in the garden where I live, and people have come by and they told me from some pretty pricey suburbs of Boston, and they said, well, Portsmouth is too crowded, we really like coming to Newmarket. And it's just because it's on the river, mm -hmm. it's quiet, it's peaceful, it's beautiful, they can she eat must out. must not have children that want to get educated then, huh? Well, this is for their weekends. They want okay. to, yeah. Say, yeah. He's got a school that should have been condemned years ago. So well, I mean, that's actually been taken care of. But is this, okay. is, this, is, this is the new kind of recreation okay. users that are coming in for weekends. And okay. we're, we're having the same thing in the north of the region where up in Milton and the Moose Mountains, where they're putting in trails and they have farms and people are coming in and spending the whole day or, or the weekend up there having outdoor recreation connect with nature. Mm -hmm. Isn't it beautiful? You know, and you mm -hmm. have very similar yeah. qualities. No, it's exciting just listening yeah. to you. It is. <laughs> yeah. it is. <laughs> we just we just need somebody who can help us. Yeah. So we should contact you when we're ready if yeah. the board decides to Yeah. All right. There'll be people sure. there that it'll get it. Okay. I mean, I just think it's so cool that you're still intact from each. The plan yeah, matches I up know. with what you see. That is so awesome. It and is. It's very exciting. <laughs> and people will see that if you do it right and sort of open it's their that, eyes. It's that. See it. It's the, the the end of that sentence. If you do it right. Yes. And so and that's daunting. <laughs> yes. Right. It can be really daunting. Yeah. But there are some things that you'll find that people in the community will just, somebody will speak it and everybody else will cluster around it. Because yeah, well, it's true. We've it's been here a long time and we're very impassioned about the village and what the resource resources are in the village. So yeah. we just need to have a forum. Well, I am. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, absolutely. We need to have a forum that gets us talking to one another. and Yeah. So, yeah. and just I'm, I'm making those statements that just go into the ground and like a maypole, and everybody takes it and yes, around yep, you go. Yep. <laughs> All right, I think that could have been the end of my list. Other than poor Kylie, has been trying to get a hold of me for proceeding on the um, culvert that he. Do you aware of this? Do yes. Of I haven't had time to think about it. I haven't mentioned it to the board and in a while. And you're MS4, right? Yeah, we yes. are. And I think Liz has talked to you about MS4. And Liz? And uh, Rachel, Liz Durfee? Yes. She worked with us on stormwater right. uh, storm regs for um, site. <coughs> so we've got that adopted, and that's in there. But we now have to, the new permit, and we've got to manage that. So we're part of the Seco Stormwater Coalition. Yeah, that's And good. I think so you've been sending people now. Yes, we have. Rachel yeah. Mack and Nancy O'Connor. Yeah. And I'm, um, you know, I haven't been to the last couple of meetings for one reason or another, but a road agent is going, and so we, we need to get yeah. cracking on it. And we actually, we um, competed for the for the, uh, the project to do the oh, mapping, yes. and yep. we got it, so oh. with Rockingham, so we'll, we'll be working on that. Oh, that's super. Yes. And Rachel does gorgeous maps. Wonderful. Yeah, she's quite the artist. Is there anything that, that the board wanted to bring up with Cynthia? Because well, we now have Cynthia's good. list. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. So, your list. So, um, I just wanted to update you on the scenic byway since you guys are part of the Mills scenic yes. byway. Um, Colin and I are working on gaining some more traction with the committee oh, um, and possibly trying to get signage up um, and also create a story map. So, I did kind of a pilot story map for the Branch River Valley Scenic Byway, and it's proved to be a pretty powerful marketing tool. Um, it's essentially just a, a PowerPoint that you can post a link to. Um, mm -hmm. From our website mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. Website, Facebook, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Twitter, whatever. Um, and it's, it's, it's a virtual tour, so you know, you have your buildings and a caption explaining what it is, and then there's a little map on the side that points out where in the town it is and where on the byway it is, so um, our next step would, we're trying to set a meeting, I think, for early April with the committee. Okay, great. Yeah, we've got, we, we, we just put a call out for volunteers for various committees and whatnot. The, 
Byways was not one of them, but we did, we did, uh, which the board will find out about in a little bit, we did uh, land some folks who were marketers who have marketing experience, so that could be helpful for the, you know, seeing well, byways and stuff, yeah. So I, I heard you talking about signage for your road signs and stop, stop signs. signs. Yes. And so uh, uh, the signage for the Mills Scenic Byway, once they decide on what the sign would look like, is allowed. I mean, the towns or whomever is going to need to pay for the signs, but it would be helpful if we knew from you what would be likely sources for funding of signs for this, it, you know, within your community, somebody that might be interested, or a group, or... Oh, you mean if, if we went to other people to fund this? Is that what you're Yeah, about? like the Historic Society. I, I don't know. It's just, if you could give direction to stuff. Yeah, the mm -hmm. Conservation Society sometimes. Well, so so we're, we're appointing, and, you know, there could be some turnover, and there could be, you know, fresh you know, motivated folks on the Conservation Commission, on the Historic Committee, which we have uh, recently rea uh, reactivated, thanks to, to Michael here, it's the, been... The Planning Board, had, or rather the Conservation Commission in the past, have sort of been the, where the senior buyer was, uh, was housed, right? So, no. Yeah. But members came from... No, it was independent, because I served on the senior byways. Judy served on the senior byways. So it was just the from, from... It, it, was, it was independent. Tamara ended up chairing it. I don't know... If, uh, uh, you know, she's getting a lot busier, too. So, I, I mean, I don't know exactly. I haven't heard about the scenic byways in a while, so. So, should we send our notices to you to start the process? To jumpstart it or something? Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> sure. I mean, I would, somebody who's I would interested touch in base it. with Tamara. I mean, she has, yeah. she did lead us out yeah. and, and help to finish it for us, so. And she did good work. Yeah, she's good. She yes. is. She's, you know, gotten busy. Well, so, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. So, yeah, so that would be helpful. So, so I don't know how much funding we can expect from the store committee, but they're starting to do some fundraising, and there are folks in town who might be available to help. Yeah, and it's not going to be more than a couple, you know, three to four signs, maybe. Yeah, so and the town could cost share some of it as well. I mean, okay. that's not outside the realm of possibility. And uh, it, yeah, the 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 story book is story map is really good. Mm -hmm. So the one that's so um, just to give you an idea, uh, we started working with Route One, Route Sixteen corridor study, and that finished in 1999. It was the first corridor study done by DOT, and one of the things that came out of that was to look at Route 16 in the upper area as a as a uh, the way to get into the uh, the vacationing aspects of Route 16, mm -hmm. and so Moose Mountains is the area of Milton, Farmington, New Durham, Middleton, Wakefield, and Brookfield, and Wolfboro, and that now has the Moose Mountains Regional Greenway, which is now a land trust. And that started in 2000. And then uh, we have this Branch River Scenic Byway. Well, they're all the same people volunteering <laughs> in yeah, the same kind group. Of from, yeah. Yeah. And then they all get along really well. And so they decided that they wanted to market themselves as part of the Route 16 corridor as a place where you could go to do day recreation, not south of Winnipesaukee and Wentworth. And right. So this is a day to do day trips. And so they started marketing that. that way, yeah. And so we worked with them through our our transportation funding because it's it was transportation related and it came directly out of the Route 16 corridor study. So we had a way to support them. And they evolved into Explore Moose Mountains. Mm -hmm. And now they're looking at expanding the Branch River Scenic Byway so that it matches up with the Lakes Scenic Byway and so you get all these loops within loops and once you start making loops within loops you start getting people spending it's the day and having lunch and yeah, staying overnight, right. and yeah. that's, which is what we want them to do. And right. so 
you know, when the mill starts, you know, getting back and engaged again, you know, think about how to, you know, I always thought it would be great if you took the, the coastal one and, along one and go up along the coast and then Independence Byway goes into the Independence Museum and Exeter and the Route 108 could come up through um, uh, Newfields, Newmarket and on up and over and then cross over into South, South Berwick and then out somehow back to the coast again and you have this big loop, uh -huh. you know, with loops within it so that people can start to see that you don't have to go to the mountains, you don't have to go mid-coast Maine, mm -hmm. you can stay right here and have a really great vacation or weekend trip and mm -hmm. that's really what we want to do is start getting people to come here and spend more money on those restaurants okay. and having fun and getting having good feelings about being here. So it's that's exciting to think about things like that. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than transfer station stickers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's also so important. To that, yeah. Yeah, but it it start so they put money into is it McKinsey? They, what is it? Plummer Ridge? Yeah, Plummer Ridge. They, we helped map the trails for them out there, and they uh, had a forester out there, and they did the work over last winter, fall and winter, and they had a whole, whole year now that they've been up and running, and we were just in Middleton this morning, and um, the selectman there is the president of the New Hampshire Farm Museum, and he said there's cars, were cars over there every day of the week this winter, people out and snowshoeing, mm. um, cross country skiing, walking. So it's, you know, it's pretty easy to get it up and running. And mm -hmm. There's lots of retired people. <laughs> there are lots of retired people. <laughs> <laughs> and if they don't enter into public service, they have time to do these sorts of things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's all we have. I think so. Yeah. Well, I, and I, I want to uh, give a note of thanks to SRPC You're for many things, but in particular for this. Uh, I have not been able to attend some commission meetings, I'm sure you've noticed, of late for a whole string of reasons. But I was there when uh, Liz Strahan showed up for her first meeting in SRPC, when she was in this, the new position she's in at DES, and mentioned the uh, DARA grants. And we are a recipient of a DARA grant because of that SRPC meeting where she brought it up. And so we bought a fire engine, and a quarter of it came from a DARA grant money. Really? Yes, oh, that's and that's, that is a huge thing. That's a big thing. So, <laughs> so that was a wonderful thing that happened at that SRPC meeting. So. Oh, good. I'm glad that you So it's a general this. thank you to SRPC <laughs> for all these years, but a very particular recent thank you for that. You're welcome. I'm really glad that happened. Yeah, so are we. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I leave, I leave the organization in very capable hands, both the commissioners and the staff, so. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much again, Cynthia. Nice to meet you, Stephanie. Yeah. And the best thank of you. luck. I'm going to oh, shake yeah. your hand and wish you the best. Oh. Have a great time. Thank you very Whatever much. Whatever you do, have a great time. I will. <laughs> Don't run for public office. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Thanks. <laughs> All right. You ready to go on? issue is the on South Street and Somerset Road. I think we got an email from Tom, right? He's on it. Yes. And there may be something in the folder. I don't know, but he was going to be working on uh, letters and stuff. All right. Town administration. Um, should we try to get through the rest of it and then come back to the appointments? Because does that does that work for the group? All right. Let's do that. Um, and we're not going to. Uh, the chief is ready for us to discuss the police appointments and hourly rates.
So that's table. We'll do the committee appointments later in the meeting, uh, as well as the trustee of the trust funds. Uh, we're tabling management response. Uh, I haven't had time to draft it. All right, uh, compliance, 112 Rollins Road. So that's back on the top of the list. Um, there was a conversation with the attorney, and they they also agreed that now that we have a housing ordinance, let's get this back to Tom and let Tom see what he can do with the housing uh, ordinance. So that's where that is. Well, we have to go to court. Pardon? So we don't have to go to court. Not, not, not just yet. yet. Right. Uh, rec committee. So I think uh, Denise is going to bring up some issues, uh, but the one I want to bring up is a request from uh, the rec committee for a town email for the recreation director. You know, so it would be a, whatever it is, uh, camp, a rec, rec director at Rollins for Dunn and All right, so that would cost the town $120 a year, which really is a bargain. Um, and it would uh, allow, and we would, so it would be tied to eight persons. It would be tied to, like, Brittany mm -hmm. Powers. Mm -hmm. Brittany Powers. Not Brittany Spears. Brittany Powers. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's not how I prefer to write. Oh. Because I don't know either one. Oh, okay. And so, yeah, so, but, yes. So Jody had a good laugh when I <laughs> referred to as Brittany Spears. So, uh, so it would be tied to, to Brittany Powers, but it would have an alias, like, rec director or something right. like that. So. Right. Next year, if there's a new director, you don't have to change right. that alias, just the person behind it. So that's right. how we manage. Can that. you have multiple persons behind it? No, it's tied to one. Just one. Just one. Okay. However, but you can set up a group email, which is what we have for like the rec committee. Okay. Right? Yeah. It doesn't require that any, it, any email would do. Okay. So we've got a group email for the rec committee, mm -hmm. and I did add Brittany's uh, oh, e email. Her, her personal one, right? Until we get yeah. right. And if we set something up, we'll, we'll, we'll just remind me, and I'll change it. Okay. Yeah, but so, the parents, I think, need to contact. Well, that's that's staff exactly staff yes. So if stuff. you saw, I, I don't know if it was just I who's getting the email from Celia, but it was that kind of an argument. Yeah. It gives the parents yeah. something that they can. It's consistent. It's consistent from year to year. Exactly. Yes. Right. It only will be run by whoever the director is, but the email will never change. The email will never change. Where if you have a personal one. It's going to change regularly. <coughs> you have changing in the exactly. direct. So, and this sets it I up. It makes this, sense. You know, it gives, and, which is why one of the reasons it was good to do this. It lets people know, okay, this is a sanctioned town mm -hmm. email. Mm -hmm. It's not like you know, like, like whatever we had before. You mm -hmm. know, tax collector at yahoo.com, mm -hmm. and you know, I can create an email that says tax collector at yahoo.com. Yeah. Well, exactly. Right. Do all kinds right. of. Right. Like, I don't know what nefarious things I might do, but because uh, right, I don't anyway, think but, that way. Yes, but you but, know what yeah. I mean. Yeah. 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 So, so this this is a town thing. So, so if if you'd like to think about it, you can. Otherwise, I would entertain a motion to add uh, uh, the rec director to the town. Uh, have a town sponsored email at one hundred twenty dollars a year. I'll second it. Any questions or comments? It's, I mean, I think for one hundred twenty dollars, I have the safety of kids are part of the potential safety of the kids are part of this program. I think we should spend that. All those in favor say aye. 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 And I would just add, Celia, I know you offered to build this into your budget next year. Next year. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it's just part of the information systems line, and it's probably easier for us to think of it that way. So, And it's just 120 bucks, so I don't think you need to worry about that from a budgetary standpoint. Okay. Would you agree with that? Yep, that's fine. Yeah. All right. All right, now, Denise, I have, a, I have a couple, couple more yeah. things up from the rec meeting. Um, uh, on Sunday, um, did we vote all the members in last week? I don't, I don't know if we did. You know, no, the we appointments. Yeah. We're doing that tonight. No, we did not. I thought, I thought we did, so we did not. All right, um, that's the email. Um, okay. Um, one of the things that um, was brought up was there was an issue when um, they received a grant um, and didn't th uh, follow through through the board of selectmen. And in this particular case, it was a Ronald's Education Foundation grant, which I'm in charge of. Was this last year? Oh, yes. Sure. You're in charge of the Rollins for the Education Foundation? I am. Oh, good. I am the treasurer. Okay. Um, we are a 501c3. Oh, okay. So, because we're a 501c3, we must write the check out to the person who is doing the event. So we cannot run it through the select board. So, 
what I believe. What's the event? What do you mean? Well, they had um, doodle bugs. Doodle bugs last year, oh, and so we, it remember. was a great, uh, it was a grant that we supplied six hundred dollars to doodle bugs. However, it was more money than the six, so they had to come up with a remaining balance because the grant was only for six hundred dollars. So. If they get a grant through REF, which I understand they're going to be replying for another one, we must write it out to whoever's doing it because we have requirements we have to fulfill to meet our 501c3. I don't remember that being the issue. I mm -hmm. thought it was more before they apply for grants, they should be running it by us. Oh, that's we're a good one. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Because we're, we're, wasn't that more of the issues? Well, well because we're the ones it's, that really. You know, I, 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 I do through. have a lot of history here, so I have a lot of sensitivity to, to these kinds of things, and normally, uh, you know, grants usually have deliverables associated with them, and so if there's a commitment, then this is the group that can make a commitment on behalf of the town, mm -hmm. and not, not the rec committee, or mm -hmm. not, the, not any other group, and so... And and I know that the you know the fire go go they go out and do things and the police go out and do things so we're not quite completely put together on this mm -hmm. and I get that we're a small town it sort of takes a while and you don't want to stifle either mm -hmm. that's not that's not what we want to do we want to have people thinking about these things mm -hmm. so 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 what if is there a way to imagine this doodle bugs thing where where we would have been the people doing the event I guess it's, it's just a question well. The, the Board of Selectmen certainly can okay a request that the Recreation Committee is asking for a grant. I think that's definitely appropriate since you're the umbrella of it. But I, my understanding from Celia at the meeting on Sunday was that there was there was a problem that the money didn't throw this uh, through the uh, town budget to send out to doodle bugs. Did I understand that correctly? That's where clarification is. Oh, okay. Because in this particular case, we cannot. We have to deal directly with the person who's doing the event. So. Oh, sorry. So Doodle Doodlebugs was hosting the event, so therefore the the grant. Doodlebugs. Oh, well, is that what you're saying? The committee submitted a grant request, and they were asking me to have Doodlebugs come in. Doodle, we we issued the grant to Doodlebugs, so I paid Doodlebugs what we right. granted, but they had to come up with an additional amount of funds. To cover the rest of the the rec committee, yes, and that's what we or that's you, yes, and that's why I said, hmm, how uh, come this didn't? Yeah. How come the whole yeah. thing didn't come through? Yeah. But we have to, all right, okay, okay. because they they have to fill out forms and do um, a summary and everything that comes to me. So they're actually, so they're actually getting the grant from you. Doodlebugs is getting the technically grant. technically through the rec committee though. The rec committee asked them to do a service, and then they requested the rec committee requested the grant. However. Once the grant was accepted, we dealt directly with Doodle Bugs. And the C3 writes the, your C3 writes the check to Doodle Bugs, not yeah. to the town. That, that is correct. I have to, I yeah, have I to write it. the check well, let, to let, the organization. Let's, the the let's, let's at least uh, make sure that the board is aware of, of this. I have no problem with that. And, and maybe because, sign up on it. Because, yeah. we, yes, because what... That's what well, sure I thought the major hang-up was. I am recalling that was Yeah, because what we're concerned was. about, so if there's a problem, right, right. if there's a problem, and they need more money, they need more something, and the town gets stuck with this, then we're saying, well, where did, you know, so, so that's, it's kind yeah. of like the, the grant for the Rollins Education Trust Fund, their trust, uh, education foundation. foundation, thank you, sorry. More likely it doesn't have strings attached to it, but that doesn't mean if they went and applied somewhere else, there wouldn't be strings. That is correct. That's right. But, but, but my, that's, yes, yeah. that's exactly that's, that's, it. Yeah. That was our you know, grants have terms and conditions, yeah. and if the recipient doesn't follow the terms and conditions, yeah. the grantee yeah. says, yeah. "Well, we're not going to give you the money." Right. So, so it's because of those kinds of yeah. things that we need to have some kind of role. Exactly how? Yeah. Uh, you know, we're kind of figuring it out, but and those that are my I'm concerns. There, I can kind exactly. of guide them the way. Yes. But Perfect. what my suggestion is, if any grant that they apply for, they should have a signature saying that the select board are notified of this. Yeah. At, at the clear. least. Yes. At the least. Yeah. And and then if it is accepted, then at the least the notification to the board that they receive this grant, and yes. it will be paid directly to whoever, okay. you know. So I just want to make sure that was clear as why I had to. Yeah, as long as, we, as, long as we know yeah. ahead of time, then we can we have the opportunity to ask these questions yeah. and see if there's something weird about it. You know, like you're saying, like some term or condition that could put us in and expose us somehow. Right. Yeah. All right. The other thing is, um, there was there was a request. Um, 
that did get a key to the town hall to, for meetings, and she was turned down. Um, By whom? Uh, Caroline. Okay. So I, I'm kind of confused about who gets them and who doesn't. Um, so I, I guess I, I'm looking for a little guidance there because, I mean, well, I was the chair for the budget committee for years and years, and I never had a key to get in. Let me, let me check our key <laughs> policy. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because you know I mean? Paul but gave one to me when I became chair of the budget committee. Do you want me to be able to get in the building? Chief, please give it to me. I'm like, I know. Okay. One. Yeah. I didn't ask for it. Yeah. So. so. Yeah, I, I don't have one now. But yeah. I might have one now to get the yeah. front door, but I don't want to get one now. So the issue, well, but the issue is that you you folks meet on Sunday. Uh, yeah. And right. so who's who? Nobody's going to be nobody's here. But if in the event, like this weekend, I was very sick and I didn't really feel like going out. Yeah. yeah. So, but they didn't have a key to get in, so I did come. Um, but I just didn't know what the policy was. Well, for committees and we don't have one. And, we, we just okay. don't. So, so the ZBA had the same issue the other night. If I hadn't been able to make it, yeah, they don't have one either. Right. So as you can see, you know, there's been it's a problem, and I get that. Yeah. And so, so the first thing I'm thinking of is no. no. Yeah. Right. But we haven't solved the problem. So right. I, right. And yeah. so we have we have a problem. So I can tell so, you what happens with the historical committee if I can't make. Yeah, well, I wondered about but that. I'm wondering I mean, if, if there's it, other it, options other yeah. than the town hall. Like, yeah, what about the library? the library? What about the right. grade school? Right. I mean, is there other? There's other options in this town, and your director is a, a staff member of the grade school who has a key to get in. I'm sure, you know, which are less restrictive. Yeah, of, they're than just the more, town hall. More right. people. You know, well, yeah. So I'm wondering if I'll get to you in a minute, Celia. Just, yeah, so yeah. I'm wondering I mean, if we I was going to suggest that. I, mean, I don't know about the library how security. security is on the library, but they have a they have a room, a meeting room. Well, Garden Club yeah. uses it. It's a great. They yeah. have Close a, at seven, right? So long as you're out by seven. Well, no, 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 no. We stay. We we are we are a trusted partner. Yeah. Okay. Well, or fine. Whatever. A trusted they have a client. Either, yeah. So has a key. Is what you're saying? What? They have a key to get in. No, we don't have no. a key to get in. We go in when the library is open, oh, I see. And, but we stay beyond, and I so see. we close up. You make sure it's locked. Yes, that's, okay. that's, what, that's what we do. So, I mean, what it might be something to think about that's less restrictive than this building is. Um, it's just, I'm just putting it out there, but like I say, you have someone who is a staff member at the grade school already on your, on your board. Uh, two, actually, because Lori is two. And they're so, at the Garden Club has been at the grade school as yeah. well. I mean, it's a... They can have it go in a classroom, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's something to think about, and I kind of, I kind of had that same feeling as, especially after what Bob said That's earlier. What happens. There's a lot of keys out there, and yeah. you know, you just got to be careful about issuing keys. Yeah. yeah. So that was that was brought up, and I, I said I would bring it up, but. Uh, I, I mean, it'd be nice if we could think of something like that that would allow us to use. The bill. I mean, this yeah. is a you know, it's a town committee. We've asked yeah. them to do this. Yes. They're doing it. Yeah. They're engaged. They're doing a great job. And you don't want to put hurdles in front of yeah. them all the time. Yeah. But on the other hand, we you can see we've got you know a key issue. Of the we have, yeah. yeah. We so have um, one of our alternates has access to the library because I believe his wife or a family member is head of the friends okay. of the library. Yeah. So we have met at the library after hours before because he's gone through the appropriate channels to ensure that the library yeah. was usable. So that us. might be yeah, a, that that might so, be an avenue so that if, you should take and, and, and mm -hmm. yeah. try it and see how it works, you know. So yeah. We have met not necessarily in the meeting room but in the open space. Well, whatever the library. whatever works. If, I mean especially if it's beyond opening night, I mean when the after it closes, it doesn't matter really where you meet. But there's a nice conference room right there. Yeah, a table and chair. So right. yeah, um, it's very it's very comfy. It's, uh, so you know, let's look at it, uh, Celia, and, and maybe you can re um, reply back to D that we talked about it, and maybe look at other options because right now there's really no policy about who gets keys. There is no, and we're, right. we're concerned yes. about the amount of keys that are already out. Yeah, and mm -hmm. if it if people who they are and whatever right. have them. Yeah, that's that's so the issue. But I mean, until, and we can still come here, I will just make sure I can get here, you know, but, um, so, but I would like to see it happen for the next meeting if we can, which is the end of April. Maybe try the library of the grade school. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, that's, that's all I have. Space. Is there for the record? Yeah. Yes, thank oh. you. Excellent. Oh, let's see.
しい
the, the larger co-op is willing to sort of sort of loan out if a, if a town can't pay the full thing next year you could sort of right, right. do it over a couple the, of years the, the nice thing I mean we don't have to go out with um, with shipyard it would, to me it seems to make sense <coughs> they come through town or to pick up our other stuff but one of the deals that um, keep saying number, that shipyard has that we have to keep buying cans okay? mm -hmm. they open top cans we have to replace them over the years and we'll have to keep replacing them if we don't do this deal but They'll just give us cans, and they just swap them out. That's their can. That's like their, their can. Right. Stream is their right. Can. That's their can. Mm -hmm. Now, for the compactor cans, like the special closed compactor cans, we would have to rent those because they only have so many. Mm -hmm. But the open, that's. Um, but we already bought just bought some, didn't we? So we wouldn't have to rent them. We wouldn't right now, no. Yeah. But what okay. if, um, down the road, we wouldn't if we went with this this this. Um, Company model this model, model. thank you. Mm -hmm. Then we wouldn't need to replace a number of uh, of the cans potentially that we have over the years. Mm -hmm. We could save money there too. I mean, it's there. There are um, there are certainly advantages to, to go. And other companies may offer other things. On it. Mm -hmm. I've only talked to the one because she was there. But um, I think there are a lot more advantages for us not being co-owner of this very expensive truck, and then if someone may need to staff it. So. Mm -hmm. Right, it, it, allow, it gives us the agility, you know, it yeah. makes us more nimble because then we can look around sure. and see if there are sure. you know, deals or this and that. And, and, like I said, and the Epic problem, has a, a company that literally is housed in their town that wants to do it for them, but they've been stuck with this, mm -hmm. with yeah, this truck in Northwood as well. So mm -hmm. they, you know, what compounded the problem is that the truck was a lemon. Yep. In the beginning. They Pretty both much. Have, I mean, that, that's uh, when, I, when I jumped Moriarty onto the board. Joe was the outgoing chair, and, and he was a member of the board of selectmen for 40 years. 39 years. He's there at Jansen. He, he actually, that's how he describes himself to me. He goes, I was there at Jansen. Or members at Jansen. But he admitted as much. They bought this truck because they thought it was, they were going to save a few thousand on the front end. And it was like, because it was a leftover and all, oh, they're going to save all this money. And then come to find out it was a lemon and they've been stuck with it for some months. So, yeah. You know, and if there are problems with the driver, which we have had periodically, yeah, yeah, you mentioned that too. <laughs> if, you know, you can't you you, I mean, you can't complain to the company because you yeah. are the you're, you're the you company, are it, you know, yeah. right? And, so. and the rate that we were paying or have been paying this person and, and prior drivers is so low that mm -hmm. it's it's hard to attract folks if you're not paying a good wage, mm -hmm. you know. So, but we've had to pay the the mileage. Well, from Madbury to here to Turnkey right. and back. Yeah, or back to the at some point back to. So the that's Madbury. the other advantage. So if we're not, if we're using their can, they're not having to drive it back and forth. You know, they they empty well, and they bring the can back. They, you, they're they just right. If you have a company bring an empty one and take one, yeah. one out, right? If you have yeah. a company that's busy in an area, they can generate a, a route for themselves mm -hmm. that is. Efficient and therefore, yeah, they, you know, yeah. you can you can enjoy some of the they, benefits of that. Yeah, I'm trying to think sure. of the lady thing, Kathy, I think it was. I, Is this from Shipyard? Yeah, I sent um, Caroline her card, but it was saying, you know, they have guaranteed same day if there's an emergency pops up, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're, they'll honor Is the rate. Yeah, I, I don't know where they are. But yeah. They're not yeah. Yeah. They, um, you they know, they've been very helpful. They have been very accommodating. So when far. we had when we we're doing the transfer station. Again, we couldn't get, uh, you know, Lamprey to mm -hmm. step in because we we had some extraordinary things that had to be moved around and this and the other thing. He, I mean, we paid for it, but they were able to come in, be responsive, do what we needed yeah. them to do. Mm -hmm. Very helpful. Okay. And we are not on contract with them. It's month to month, and, but there hasn't been a there's been no increase since it's, we it we're, started. We're, I think we're an advantage because they have to come through here. It's really but she has mentioned so that. She mentioned that several times. You know, we're at a disadvantage with the yes, with land sure. trucking, and mm -hmm. so it's nice to be mm -hmm. to, so. to enjoy uh, yeah. a little many. Yep. All right. So thank you, Mike. Thank sure. you for doing Happy it, and we'll, we'll we'll wish good thoughts for the sale. But there's nothing we have to do at the moment. No, right? we, we posted it on our website, right? Caroline posted it for the Trucking Consortium yep, on the, the Municipal, municipal Association. Yep. And uh, I think I was mentioned, we're advertising with Seacoast Media Group, which is all oh, those Fosters papers, and Fosters and, and, and Herald and whatever the extra one is in Hampton. They're all owned by the same company. Mm -hmm. so And uh, Union Leader. So. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. All right. Um,
Second Street Condos. Oh, okay. So this was one of the, uh, I guess we ought to talk about both. There's a second transfer station sticker issue, I think. So, uh, I'm perplexed by, yeah, both well, of those by which, by both by of them. Both of them. Well, I don't understand why either of these individuals would have been denied a transfer station sticker. I just don't. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, you one know? of them is not a resident. He's, and you're a resident. He's a, a snowbird that goes to Florida. So do we do that for every single one? Because there are other families in town that do that. So he, he, owns, a, he owns property here in town? Yeah. Okay, so he, he lives running. here in the right, uh, so Florida spring, license, summer, I and think that was it. I don't even know this he person. Had a, I don't even know this person. And that's what made it yeah. difficult, but I guess. But he must, they must have him in the tax book or whatever. The yeah. yeah. Can I look? As soon as I saw the email, I'm like, that's what I wanted to go to the tax portal and say, does this person actually live here? So, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to provide some guidance. Some guidance. You know, because they're trying, you know, they're... I know they're trying, but this is... In the, so, in the one on Second Street, this guy owns one of those condos. I mean, it's across the street from me. He's a property owner and a resident. Why would he ever be denied a permit? Regardless of whether or not they have to have a dumpster or not, it, it's meaningless. It's moved to me. I don't understand why a resident would be denied a transfer station sticker. And this is not the first time this has happened on that street or on South Street. Okay, so here's here's the background on Second and what my understanding would have is I think the front office looked at the housing ordinance and said, excuse me, owners, if owners have four or more units, they have to supply a dumpster. Uh -huh. Well, the, the difficulty here is that well, there's no owner of all four units. Correct. They're individually They're individual. owned. Well, there could be. There's an association. And that's so why that, I said, okay, right. so let's talk to Michael. So Michael, why don't you, Tell us about okay. maybe you want the, the horrible. Well, horrible. I don't. I don't know. There's a Enough neighborhood association. So that we understand. There's a Second Street Neighborhood Association, okay. right? It disbanded for a while because the building in question didn't want to have to share some of the costs. They thought they could do it cheaper on their own. Fine. They went their separate way. Then they renamed themselves. It's still, I just call it the Neighborhood Association. We have a dumpster that well, services the five service. houses. The brick buildings Correct. on Second Street. All those okay. brick boarding. Houses I think I saw them. There. I think they're. I think I saw the dumpster, so I've been looking at a I walked around a little bit. So that's household trash only. Pardon? Household trash only. Uh, and recycling. We have recycling, and recycling. dumpster. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. I guess what we would bring right. to You'd bring the, the recycling or the municipal right. solid So waste. this building decided they didn't want part of that. More power to them. They have their own separate little garbage cans or whatever on their back decks. Whatever. Um, and dump stickers. And they have transfer station stickers, yeah. They use transfer station now. Um, we didn't have this, minute, this housing standards before. We do now. So, they're going to need to figure out what they're going to do. They can either come back and join them. Well, now there's another wrinkle. The neighborhood association wants to disband to have no dumpster. But, um, I'm sorry, what? what, what? Our, our neighborhood association, of which I am not in favor of this, wants to disband and um, get rid of the dumpster. And that would mean that six buildings, six units each, that would be 36 new um, residences would be dumping into the transfer station. Now they have a right to use the transfer station because they are property owners and residents of the town, but we have an ordinance that says they should be using a dumpster because they're multiple units, because they're a part of an association. Each building has its own associate condo association. It's not like all six on the street are one. Each little brick house building is its own association. Another wrinkle. So. so there is another reason to have a, a dump permit, though, because it, your dumpster is only for household yeah. trash. Right. But what about furniture? What about yeah. things that, uh, like, um, I don't know, things that you wouldn't do yeah. in a house? You know, air conditioners or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you pay you a fee, but you still have to have a permit. You still have a permit to do yes. that. Right. And if you had a lot small bag of trash, you could put it in there too, I suppose. But I mean, there's other reasons other than. Household trash. That is true. That, that is very true. But can we, can we go back to the uh, essential question about? I mean, it, it, it's not surprising. I mean, you, you write an ordinance, and you and you you don't know all of the particular circumstances that, that are going to be used right. to, to try to manage things within the town. So so here here we have the first one already, and and I know that I wasn't thinking of condo associations for that part. I was thinking about 
a person. This is a okay. recent development too. This was not when we were developing. This is within the last three weeks, maybe that our um, that our um, neighbor association was talking about disbanding. So, it's so it's like just a coincidental with, yes, with, that, with the housing one. But the one across the street is not, and it's it, that's been going on now for like six months. But that wasn't. So other than this person who was de who was denied or given a thirty day, yeah. they've all. Then Everyone else in do that. Do you have a transfer station sticker? I do actually. Yeah. I was never never questioned why. Yeah. So, so I mean, I know that when. And I've never. I don't think I've ever actually put anything there. But every time I go there, I like to just check and see how things are doing. I get nasty looks. I don't have one on my car, so I got one. I don't think I've ever brought anything to the town transfer station. So I I think there are two essential pieces. One is. I, I, I was starting to say, I mean, when I was reading the housing ordinance, I was thinking of a person, a landlord, right. owning right. a multi-unit, and that's what we were right. talking about. Right. We weren't talking about a building that might have four units, but they were all individually uh -huh. owned, or at least I think of them individually owned. They are individually owned. That is mm -hmm. a true statement. So that, then they're not, because if you read the housing ordinance, it says that, you, you know, the owner will provide for the for the. Oh, for the but people right. in the unit. Well, yeah, right. I'm the oh, a condo owner. I don't. Right. I, I, I'm only right. responsible for me, not for right. the, my neighbor right. upstairs or whatever. True. So now, there may have been though, and I'm trying to figure this out. Um, when the planning, when it went through planning, went that through site review, right? Question. There may have been a requirement. Now I know you're all going to be shocked. No, but I know lo and behold. I can't find any of the minutes from 2006, I think it was, if I don't remember correctly. They just don't seem to be anywhere. So, I tried to look at the registry, they filed certain pieces of it, they had a very reputable um, surveyor and engineer that helped them, it was Kevin McEnany. So, the plans that are on, on file in the registry don't concern me, but they don't, it's not the actual site review plan that's at the right, it's just a map, it's not, it's an individual map, it's not. The, so any of those And at one time we turned, we didn't require all of the conditions to be, we do now, but so. So we don't know, so one possibility is that there was some. I looked at the. In the safe? Yeah, I didn't see them in there. I mean, I go through, I only spent a couple of hours, one Saturday looking. I should spend more time, you're right, I can go in there and look again, but they weren't where. All the other minutes are kept, so maybe there's a place I didn't see them. So I mean, I can go and look again, but so so maybe there's something in there uh, of planning for separate, yes. that's separate. But I think you're probably right. My, I mean, they are separately owned, so I don't think it applies. I, mean, I, I, don't I just think don't it think it applies. Either. I mean, trust me, I don't want to see the dumpster go anywhere because I think it's going to be bedlam to have 36 different units. I think mean, I think you're going to have rat infestation. I think it's going to be an issue. So it, it benefits me to have to spend more money. On a dumpster, but you're right. They are individually owned, so I don't know if you can hold them to that same standard. So, I mean, if they choose to have a dumpster, that's fine. But if they, if they, they should be required be, to, they, yeah. And they should have. I mean, they should Somehow be able to get a permit. Be easier. So, I mean, it is going to increase. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The tonnage. Yeah. Of yeah, course it would. Absolutely will. Mm -hmm. But unless unless we could find that something. I mean, you can't can't say no based on well. I think they well, you know, we think they did this, but yeah. you, you no, can't of course do that, you can't. Right? Yes, I mean, we um, we've had the same person as our treasurer organized in this neighborhood association for eleven years now, and she's tired and doesn't want to do this anymore. So she can get volunteers her time, and no one wants to step up and do it. So that's part of the problem. So the other thing it tells us, it tells me anyway, is that, okay, we don't charge enough. Okay, if the not. dumpster is more expensive than using the transfer station. So therefore, True. you know, one, one way to look at this is that we're not charging enough. No, we try to change that. And it brings me back to one of the things that I would like us to consider, but we need, it's, it's going to require a group or something to work on, and that's, you know, you pay for back. But before we get off it too far down that rabbit hole, we need to yes. figure out these people are residents and property owners. Yes. Why are they being denied yeah. transfer Well, service? let's not let's not say that. Well, let's just provide guidance to them. We'll say here's the mm -hmm. here's why, and in the future, well, it's please. It's still a little strange that I live across the street from this building, 
and nothing was said to me, not, not one word. Yeah, there was no housing ordinance. They, they, were, they were citing the housing ordinance. Mm. They just got passed. Just saying, they just yeah. got passed. So. Recently, yes. But yes, the gentleman but on Rollins Road, that's that, that was, he's a, he has a property here. He, should, he yeah. shouldn't have been denied. Yeah, I mean, I get it. He's a, like I said, he's a snow right. so. He has a claims, I'm sure he claims a homestead exemption down in Florida. That's mm -hmm. why his cars are registered there, because it's cheaper than the right. taxes down. Exactly. I mean, I get that. But, um, but he's still a property owner. But he's still a property owner. I mean, if, so there may of be... Of a residence concern. that he lives in. Like right. I mean, I don't know right. how many months out of the year, but I, I... This is the house on Rollins Road that is... Has, it had a permit. Remember, we made sure that had a permit, but it's being rehab. It's a tiny little house, the second to last house uh, uh, yeah, on Rollins before you could turn the summer mm -hmm. before. It's a tiny little house, a setback, a redoing. So you see, my point is, you see them there. It's not like... Mm -hmm. It's in the backwoods and you never see anyone there. I mean, you guys drive, yeah. it's a, there's a road people drive on. Right. You see people living there. So, so we're fine with giving them guidance that says, look, if you've got the, the yes. little snowbirds, yes. yes, of course, even if they were registered outside one too, the state. Wasn't there? Wasn't there? Uh, I thought there was just two, a Rollins Road and a I thought there was condos. Three, but maybe you know, if, um, you know, if you find something out different about that, then we'll, we'll address well, it. Well, that would just be for those buildings. Seconds. Yeah, that just yeah, no, yes, that that's that issue. But there are apartments, so this I don't want to create more work for us, trust me, but there are houses, apartment buildings on South Street that we may need to address then. I mean, that are providing dumpster services for their tenants, remember, because they claim they don't have any room for them or there are spaces mm -hmm. where they could have them, they just choose not to. Mm -hmm. So well, we can start to sort of pick away at them. I mean, at right. the moment, we do, you know, I, I, th I mean, I've been thinking things would come to us <laughs> before oh, we start do. to, yeah. So we've got some compliance issues that we're already, you know, right. been on our list for a while. I'm not trying to create more work. No, I understand, but it's, it's just something it, we need it, to keep in the back it, of our mind. Absolutely, yeah. And absolutely. if we need to be able to defend, if you're holding one street to one standard, what is the reason why you're doing it? And if you're right. not holding the same, yeah. another street. But we're clear on this that a condo ownership, there is a difference yeah, here. There is a single. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Because the association doesn't own it. Then you pay dues in the association. Yeah. Just right. But they're paying not, their taxes individually. So they're not. Right. right. Yes. So. Okay. So unless you can find something different in the planning right. records, then then I think we're, okay. we're good. All right. That's the stickers. Um, Oh, I see. They're, um, they weren't together. The, no. Like we've handled both. I think we need to do F, though. Yeah, we do. Yeah. So this is just um, something so, so I can sort of lay out this what this is. And you heard me mention it to, I think, to Cynthia. So uh, several years back, when the Sligo Road culvert that is now a one-lane road it was first brought to the board's attention as an issue, we tried to get some grant money through this one of these... This, I, don't, I don't remember what the initials are, but something, something emergency management. It was, it's like a hazard mitigation. It was grant money, so we got, we actually got authorization from the town, but the grant money never came through, and and uh, this is another round of it. And Kyle, who's uh, an SRP, SRPC employee, laid the groundwork, and we put in a request because it didn't commit us to anything. Mm -hmm. And so now I think we have to decide if we want to take the next step. And so that's what this is, and I think I and I heard from Seco Stormwater Coalition. I think it's about the same program, but I'm gonna there's if I have time, I will try to check it out. But it's another grant opportunity. What other resources that we need to we have to commit before we can what, apply for? Or, uh, not I, I I'm not sure that's part of it, but I think yeah. we have to leave end of April. Because okay. I mean, we 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 got state authorization. We made it through that round. It was when it got to the feds. You're like, oh. Two million dollars for the entire country. Like you're not on the list. I mean, well, right? We got pretty happened, far. I mean, what, yeah. What happened was they the, the feds changed their their priorities. Yeah. So they were giving the money away to planning purposes, and not to actual mitigation. Right. Yeah. And so we were looking to actually try to mitigate that. Right. I mean, there are issues with that culvert that are not just how to how, how do we fix it, but there are people who like the fact that it's an old historical culvert and you know to replace it with a concrete box culvert doesn't appeal to them you know we've talked to our engineers at Hoyle Tanner and who say you know you, the span is really pretty much 
big enough for it to be considered a bridge. You get yourself on the bridge program, which is a, an 80-20. You know, we pay 20, the state pays 80. So, I mean, I'm, and I'm just kind of telling you some of the things that I know, but that's, that's what that's about. You know, someone would have to figure out if we can possibly take the next step with these grant opportunities and the Sligo Road culvert. So it's there. I'll maybe send all of us the links that I currently have, and if somebody has time to explore or buy it, time I will. All right, we've handled the G. Uh, all right, Michael, this is you again. Uh, let's talk about uh, Senate Bill 438, please. Oh, okay. yeah. So I think you're all aware of that. Uh, I'm not. Okay, so, so last just... year we had a blizzard come bearing down on us for a town meeting, right, on the election day. And we... As a community, as a select board, after consulting with the police, the fire, the town clerk, hearing from town residents, we decided to postpone the election out of concern for public safety. There were 70 towns, I believe, all together that did this. Uh, the Secretary of State, even though the, the, or the, sec, the state statute clearly says that local elections are the purview of the localities, not the Secretary of State's office that the moderator has the right to postpone the day of voting. It literally says the word, the day of voting. The Secretary of State interpreted that to mean that it wasn't the day of voting. Of course, it didn't really mean that. It meant the business portion of your meeting. Even though it clearly says the day of voting, but whatever. Um, and the current Attorney General has gone along with it. Uh, the former one did not. Um, this year, it also snowed again. We were told we were not allowed to postpone our election. This time, the governor and his attorney general uh, and the secretary of state all were in agreement. So we didn't postpone because we were threatened we would be sued and our election would be invalid. So we didn't. And uh, now, the secretary of state, after the last election, worked out a deal with Senator Regina Birdsell um, and a few others to put in a bill take away the power of the moderators to decide how to best conduct a local election phase is, is my... So it more explicitly disallows... us. Disallowed us. If we want to postpone... That's what this bill is? If we want to postpone our election for some reason, we have to get permission from the Secretary of State. If this is the only people that supported this bill in the Senate were the sponsors, the Secretary of State, and for some reason the Professional Firefighters Union. Because, and I said the same thing, all the look that you're all giving me is the same look that I gave. They, they are making the claim that towns and cities would use, towns specifically, not cities, although I think the kids said cities, but whatever, he's new, um, said that um, people like us would use this to mess around with, with the labor contracts. To which I looked at him, I wanted to slap him upside his head, to be honest with you, because it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in a committee room. The dumbest, but one of the dumbest. Like, none of us would ever do that. I mean, it, I, it, it no, is I don't want to take us down the garden path, but I so, just wonder. How, I don't know. We would we would postpone an election because we didn't think we were going to win. I don't, I don't know. It's it's asinine to oh, make that argument. I see to try to so they right. can get a contract just like the teacher's contract. Right. I mean, oh. so, right. I mean we, so don't have have we don't have the fire. We don't have it. Try to affect the turnout by messing around with the data. Correct. Then? Right. So then. Correct. So that's why they 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 are supporting this power grab by the Secretary of State. I think wow. we are. the other towns, I don't know how many at this point, I don't remember. I, I spoke with Cordo Johnson, who was one of the, the lobbyists for the Municipal Association. I haven't talked to Judy Silver yet, but they are trying to organize all 70 of us to at least, if we're not going to come in person, at least let them, or I mean, I'm going to be there anyway for that work there, to sign in in opposition to this bill. I mean, I wouldn't speak on behalf of the town, but we should write. The monster select board opposes Senate Bill 4. Well, would you be willing to draft or something like that? So we could, I would sign it. Yeah. Wait, so, no, so what, is, right. it, there's just a sheet when you go into the committee room that says, I could sign in Suzanne Hewitt opposes oh, whatever that okay. would be, SB 438, and it would say, do you oppose, do you support or oppose, do you want to speak? And you check off oppose, no, I don't want to speak. But That's all you have to do. But wouldn't a letter, though, be, be We helpful? could do that, yeah. Well, the hearing is on Wednesday, so we would need to get practice. This week? Yeah. Oh. Well, Thursday, you know, um, Next Wednesday. I, I, it sounds like, by, by consensus, the board, 
if I'm reading us right, the board opposes Senate Bill 438. Do I yes. am I reading us correctly? So, so whatever you could do on Wednesday, and if there's, you can come back and tell us if there's still the opportunity for us to write. I mean, there is a, there is the opportunity to send a letter to the committee. They're always, I mean, they won't be able to exact the bill that day. They have to wait a week anyway. So. Would you have the time to draft something, or would Charlie, or? Because uh, I, I, I know he feels as something. we do. Yeah, Charlie, Charlie already has letters. drafted several letters to these people, so including the governor's office to express his disdain for this process. Um, yes, I, I'll be happy to work with Charlie. I'm going to volunteer him, and I'll think of mine. It's, um, oh, it's Thursday, I apologize. Thursday, March 29th at 1.15 in room 305-307 of the legislative office building. If you're going to be in Concord. If you're not, I understand. I, I, I'm not, but thank you. I will be for work. I'll be down the hall, actually. Um, so I'm happy to sign in at the select board in opposition because it's, it's okay, let's at least clearly start, just a power Let's start group. with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, initial conversation. This is, uh, we started this last week. Uh, what I'm going to do is get a document ready. We just kind of peck away at this and with our thoughts about why it's difficult or what we need to work on in order to make it happen. Um, so there's, I have nothing new to add unless either of you have something new to add about. Okay, so we'll, we'll just move yeah. on. And also the next week, the next one is also being uh, table as far as the perambulation, but uh, there is something to add about the MOU or MOA. They're the same thing sometimes saying they can be interchanged. One is a memorandum of agreement, one is a memorandum of understanding. They're both essentially the same thing. So I let our attorneys know that Dover had offered to start the MOU for a comprehensive MOU, not just winter maintenance, but comprehensive. Who manages the, uh, the maintenance of the, the road? And so I just let our attorneys know, and that that hopefully will cut down on our legal fees if the movement starts with Dover. And so that was just to let us know that that's back in the works, and we'll, it, it will probably take a while. All right, I think we're done with town administration. The uh, new items, and so now we're with standing items. So with, I'm going to start with regard to board member activities and updates, just because it involves a change in um, who's going to what. So the Budget Committee has set their first sort of housekeeping uh, meeting for Wednesday, April 4th at 6.30, and I will be out of town. So uh, Denise, you will be able to attend. Yes. Still. Thank you so much. Okay. So, um, yes. So not this week. It's next week. Yeah, yeah. But just wanted to make sure that Denise had as much advance notice as, as possible. And I don't think I'm doing anything else this week. That, what, the agenda item? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, you're just going to do board member activity. Oh, we have to come back to committee. Right, right, right. Yeah, all right. Well, That's what I thought you were talking oh, about. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm wondering you were confused. No, I forgot all about this that. Happens anyway. So let's, let's do, uh, let's at least get through this because we've started sure. some board member activities. Then we'll come back to the uh, committee assignments. Anything happening um, from you? I already told you about the... Um, the trucking consortium, yeah. the ZBA map, and I attended. Um, what, uh, did it go well? It did in the end, yes. Okay. I think it was probably a good idea that uh, Mr. Krebs and I attended, though, because there were a lot of, there were a lot of questions that really didn't pertain to the ZBA process, or really more of what should have been, it was discussed, not should have been, but was discussed during the planning board phase, around, you know, life safety, that sort of stuff. Um, I mean, they're legitimate concerns, don't get me wrong, it's just not, not really ZBA. They weren't really on the ZBA Pretty, wheelhouse, yeah. but uh, in the end, the, every, it, it, uh, Mr. Um, FC, I think I actually said it right once, got his exception um, to allow for for apartments. Okay. And it's a permitted use by by exception. So, um, but yeah. So he seemed to he seemed. Yeah, I mean there were some conditions he has to meet. He needs to get a letter from uh, fire chief and stating that they're going to work on. Uh, life safety sprinklers, I think, specifically. Um, and um, I know he's already had conversations with the booster the company, but anyway. And he's talked to his planning board about that as well. Um, and uh, a letter from the, um, the water and sewer district, and he has emails apparently stating that, that they uh, believe that this capacity is so. okay. But other than that, he's good to go. Um, so that's a positive. 
and so he'll be um, applying. It may be in here. I don't know. I haven't looked yet. For a building a, for a building oh. permit. It could be a tonight. I'm sure we haven't gotten the stuff in yet. Okay. Yeah. So it was good. Well, it's good. I'm glad. It's good. It was a long night, though. <laughs> it's probably longer than it needed to be, let's just say. <coughs> There's a lot of stories about the old days. I'll be attending the survey meeting tomorrow at 6 30 at the oh, region. Yeah. And also. That's the annual meeting, right? That is correct. Excellent. And you are in the, that, the district, are you not? I am. Yep. Yes. You did, did you get water or do you get water? You I get water, water, right? Just water. I have water. Right? Yeah. yeah. And I'm also attending the joint last meeting at 9 o'clock at the town hall on Friday. Oh, okay. So, so that, so I'm glad you brought that up because I had a brief conversation with Caroline today, and I asked her, <clears throat> "Does a board member have to be a part of that?" Mm -hmm. She thinks not. Okay. So you can bring, you know, you can, that's a good okay. thing to talk about. I mean, what what we need is, and I I think the numbers are set by the state, but you know, I'm not sure. Four supervisors slash managers, mm -hmm. four employees, mm -hmm. so that they can work together on trying to resolve safety issues in the workplace. That's mm -hmm. kind of what it's supposed to do. So it's possible that a board member was there because it was just hard to find. Yeah. And it may still be the case. I right. don't know. but Well, like, I, I'd like to at least attend a few of them just to kind of see what's going on yeah. and what, what they're talking yeah. about and stuff like that. But we certainly can bring that up as well. Yeah. If in the event I can't make it, yeah. is it required for me yeah. to be there? Yeah. Oh, and have to find somebody else to fill my yeah. shoes. So, um, so that is that's Friday. Okay. Um, so that's all I have on this week. All right. That's it. That's all right then. So okay. before we forget, thank you, Michael. Let, let's do the committee appointments. So let me let me just tell you what you have in your packet. So I think it's an alphabetical order. I think what you have are all of the committees that we need to appoint to, and maybe some we don't like. I think maybe if joint loss is here, that's not what we have to do. Right. Uh, and then uh, here underneath, the table is filled in if we've already heard from people, so we can just look at it and say yes, that's good, or no, it's okay. not good. Yeah. And then underneath are sort of notes of people who have who have said that they were interested. Right. So I don't know if you want to do easy ones first, you know, or whether you just want to take them alphabetically the way they're coming. Yeah. Alphabetically, okay. Or whatever. Yeah, take yeah. yeah. All right. Let's just do it. So the ad hoc committee to study town manager. So, I've got three slots here. We can go to five, but we can't go to four, right? So, it's, right. so, yeah. and we interested in serving. Lorraine Hansen came to talk to us, and Kathy Lamb, Kathy Lamb came to talk to us and said they were interested. Jody sent us an email saying, you know, she would serve on any of several committees. Right, right, right. And so, I, which would be over. You know capacity, but she said she's willing to, so she's there. And then we, I think Caroline heard from Sheila Riley that she would be willing to do it, and Dean Eadhock would like to serve. So, um, so I, I, I think I think I would just assume C three. I know Lorraine as the as the sort of the author of this seems like a. a Reasonable person to. So they're, they, I mean, they're just they're compiling the information. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're not making a. Yeah. They're, they're, they're 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 just they will. Compiling well, they will be making a proposal to sure. us. Sure. Right. right. A right. report. Well, the report. A report. A report. A report. Yeah. So, a report. Yeah. So, but they're not making any decisions. No. 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 Just, just collecting recommendations. No. Just reporting right. the data and. Yeah. Then turned over yeah. to us. So I, you know, I, what, Lorraine, Kathy, and maybe she will. I, I would I would like to offer up D because I will tell you she does the budgeting for the rec committee. She's great with numbers. She's facile with ways to present data. Pardon? I thought she volunteered to do a couple of things. Well, she's on the rec. Well, she's on the rec. She is on the rec committee. Is that the only other thing she volunteered for? I thought it was uh, conservation too, maybe. No. no. Maybe I'm confusing her with someone else. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I know she's not on the rec committee. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. if there's, uh, it doesn't matter. It, it, it's, I have no dog in, in, in any of this fight. I'm not involved with passing it. I'm not, like I said, I haven't been on board before, but I'm not, whatever. It doesn't matter. All right, so. I'm not going to fall on my sword one way or another. I mean, all right. I have five, there's five people who have volunteered, but 
But also, Jody said that she there's three other committee that she would be on. So if, if plus, she's either. already on the rec committee. And, yeah, and, so that's and right. she's on the budget. That's committee. why I was saying three because of rec. So she's all she's already on part on two. Mm -hmm. just, just so you know, right? No, no, I don't. That was the elected member of budget. Yeah, she is. Right. But um, it doesn't matter. I'd, I'd like to see Dee on it as well. So, um, so are we sort of coalescing around Rain, Kathy Lamb, and Dee? Mm -hmm. All right, can I have a motion then to uh, appoint make, those three? I'll make a motion to appoint Lorraine, Kathy, and Dee. Okay, so that's Lorraine Hanson, mm -hmm. Kathy Lamb, and Dee Neehawk. Do we have a second on that? Sure. Okay. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Uh, so the CIP committee. So. So in the box, uh, yeah, all of this is pending our, our, our review anyway. So I've got you, Denise. Mm -hmm. I have Judy Nelson, who served ex officio from the school board last year, mm -hmm. but she's checking. So that could, we, we wouldn't have anything to say about that anyway. Right, right? that would be so their just, delegate. Right, right. Right. Yeah. Want to yeah. You, you yes. want to have someone there. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> so the others, Bill Irving served in 2019. Mm -hmm. I don't, don't know if he's willing to serve again. Caroline Kendall served, I mean, Bill served in 2018. Caroline served in 2019 and is 2018. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, last 17. year. Last Yeah. I, I'm totally, yeah. Oh, I see. Term expires. I'm getting confused in my own presentation. So Bill was on it last year. Let me just say mm -hmm. that. that mm -hmm. And he, we haven't heard from him. Uh, Caroline was on it last year. She's She wants to be on it again. Mm -hmm. Kevin Haynes has been on it again as the planning board ex officio. So we would just leave that as a blank ex officio. It, you know. So I'm going to bracket Judy Nelson because we have nothing to say about that, and Kevin Haynes. Yeah. Um, they can ask Kevin at the next uh, planning board meeting. Well. Yes. So, um, so, pardon? Or there's someone else who wants to do it on the planning board? Doesn't matter. Now we've asked the budget committee in the past, which we can do again, or we can just. You know, we can appoint somebody from the budget committee. We don't. Bill's budget committee. Pardon? Bill's budget yeah. committee. Yeah. So. Um, That's why I agree. Nice to go and ask them. Well, I think you want someone who's willing to serve. You know, I just appoint someone if they're not going to show up. So. Correct. Correct. So Are it depends on how quickly, I guess, the. You know, so we can ask the budget committee if they want to provide Well, something. on Wednesday night, I can say that, you know. Bill served on it, you know, and if, if Bill wants to, he can... So let's, put, let's bracket him and let's just say that's ex officio budget. budget. How does that sound? Yeah. So then we only okay. have one appointment, mm. which is Caroline. Which is Caroline. And that would give us one, two, three, four, five. Does that seem, is that, is that a good number? Is that... Um, you, you, Served on mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's, I would as long as everyone shows up, it's a good. I would actually make a plug for Jody. Yeah, I was going to say the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I just realized I just she was. Think just because, you know, with her history as a select board as yeah. well, I think that she could be an yes, asset I, to that I, committee. Yes, I agree. All right. So, so then what we could do tonight is a point of, if the board so chooses, Caroline and Jody, mm -hmm. and then the other. One, two, three, four, all ex officio. And right. get confirmation Us. on who it will be who by will the. Be. Yes. Yeah. How does that sound? That works all right. So I'll entertain a motion to nominate Caroline and uh, Kendall and Jody Lavoie Carnes. Okay, I second it. All right, that's. All right, so I move the second. Yeah. All right, so it's so done. So I'll hold the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. All right, so. Six, that's an even number. Oh, but mm -hmm. is it? It's not. Did we actually vote on it yeah, right now? It, Isn't it just recommendations? It's just no recommendations, it. sure. But yeah. if it's three to three, it's not, you can start to move a recommendation forward. If mm -hmm. We can't agree, so. I don't know that the board has been. I mean, that that group has been. It has not been divided. It has not. It's been. No, it's been pretty. Pretty yeah. unified and. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let's try it this way, okay? Sure. No, I'm just, okay. just throwing it up. All right. So the Conservation Committee Commission is a bit of a... Um, I can see the email 
a conversation. So I'm sure I do that real quick. Yeah, it could be helpful. It's yeah. in the folder. Yeah. So I know in 2016 we had an issue, and we had to work with Al to try to get the commission to some kind of stasis. Mm. And then last year we started the appointment process and never finished it. He was going to get back to us. He didn't get back to us. Wow. And, you know, we get distracted. And so the, the upshot of all of that is right now, today, we have two members with unexpired terms on the commission, Paul Cass and Larry Larkin. Okay. So hold on. I'm just trying to find it. So and we have a lot of people who are showing interest. Right. Yeah, so yeah, that's awesome. But people don't want to help. Under boards and commissions, boards and committees. Yeah, it would be in the yes. That's that's the root, and then go into the uh, conservation. Com, com, com. Yep, go in there. And then under membership. Hey, okay. And, and you should there. see it pretty much. From March 26th or March 21st. Okay. I'm going to look. Conservation commission. It's easy to find things when you're sitting there. Here it is. I think maybe. Yes. I, uh, so there's there's a there's something from the 2016 process, and then there's the email from March 21st. So that that well, then that one, if you look at that one, that sort of outlines what happened in 2017. So well. March 26th, when I open it up, all I get is this chart that is right here. I don't I don't get that. All right. So so here's I'm what. Find a little phone here. Sorry. The, the folks that don't want to do it anymore. All right. So here's what I told Al in an email at the beginning of January of <coughs> this year. All right. It looks like the board, us, never made 2017 appointments to the Conservation Commission. I have searched the minutes from the March town meeting through the end of May and found the following two items. So from March 20th, 17, was the following. Heward will talk with Al Dion regarding appointments. The CC has not yet submitted recommendations. And then on March 27th, 2017, Heward relayed Al Dion's Conservation Commission's tentative recommendations that Lorraine Hansen be appointed as a full member and Herbie Ueda be appointed either full or alternate. That was a tentative recommendation, and that was it. There was nothing else. Hmm. So we don't know if people Nor were was there anything not. about any of the other expired. His term was expired last year, right. Al's. Okay. So it never, never got resolved. That's all I found, at least through May. As you know, it's difficult for board to, this is me talking, it's difficult for board to stay on track, so I apologize for our role in not following up. And I asked, did we do something after May 31st to appoint members? Can you give me an idea of when we did this and who? If not, we'll need to get this squared away for 2018. We'd like to hear from you and the commission regarding what you think the current makeup of the commission is and who is looking to stay on in 2018. And then I said, from a procedural standpoint, Here's what I have. Robin Aikman, Dan Marquis, and you are serving unappointed terms. They all expired in March 2017. Mm -hmm. Mark Kuchar and Tamara Nedzikowski's term expired in this March year, March 2018. Right. And I've heard, so all I heard back from Al was, it turned out Ueda said his job did not allow him enough time to be on the board, and Lorraine wanted to stay on as an alternate. That's the only information I had from Al in all of this process from this year. Okay. So, 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 Paul and Larry are 2019 then? Yes. Okay, so, they are good. So, we have an opportunity, we have a lot of people with some energy. And we do, and I think we should just replace these people and, yeah, and that's what, go I, forward. I, yeah. I mean, I love the idea of Linda McGivern yes. and Tamara, who's, yep. and Tamara has history. Right. So, that's great. Um, I did talk to, I had a conversation with Robin, who as you know is not plugged into email, Robin Aikman, mm -hmm. yeah. and asked her, are you interested in staying on? She says, yes. Now, she was also one of these expired terms, mm -hmm. but would also be a historical touchstone. So, yes. you know, we've got two alternates. You heard Lorraine say she doesn't, she doesn't need to stay on as an alternate. So, so we, we have one, two, three, four four positions that we can fill regular, and two alternates, and a lot of people who are showing a lot of interest. Uh, 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 Lorraine said she would stay on as an alternate. 
she said, no, I asked her, Lorraine, would you be wounded if we didn't ask you to be an alternate? In other words, because there were a lot of people here. Oh, I see what you're saying. That, yes. So she said, that would be fine. I, you know, if you have some people, please. I see what you're saying. Okay. I, I wasn't saying. But you can put on every person on this list in, in the positions that are vacant. Is that true? Yeah. Well, so if we just... Well, because Tamara's on here, so she's on here, so just make her active again. All right. And then so Linda, which would be Dan. All right. And then this Linda Sue, I don't know who that is, but then I she could be Mark Kutcher. And then Jackie could be uh, Al. Yes. I don't, uh, I don't even Linda know how to, how to say Oz. that. Oz. Oz. Okay, Oz. Um, well, I would say... Uh, I guess I would... So if we could make one of them Lorraine's if she doesn't want to be the alternate. So, so hang on. And so, let them make the decision on whose chair once they meet. Well, that's what they should do anyway. Right. So you can appoint all of them. What about Robin? Robin. Aikman, do you think? I have her. Oh, she's yeah, already on it. Right, right, you sorry. have one, two, two three, offers. four, five positions that are open. All right. So, across. so Tamara, all we're doing is changing her year. Right. So one, tentatively, two, you've three, made Dan Marquis into four. Linda McGivern. Yeah. Larry Lark, no, Larry stays on. Yeah. You've made Mark into Linda Sue. Yeah. You've made Robin stays on. Yeah. And you've and then, made um, Al Dion into Oz. Oz. And, yeah. Oz. And then alternates, we have Jackie. No, Jackie. Who's so new? Who's brand new to town? That makes sense. Okay, so make Jackie the alternate. Be an alternate. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, what's this Patrick Kelly? Uh, Patrick Carroll? What is that? He he's he's a, he was he was. He was just the recording secretary. He was an alternate and did the recording when oh, he was okay. still in town. So he's, there's still so he's no two longer documents. In town. Uh, two alternates. There are. Yeah. So then so you could keep Lorraine. You could keep Lorraine if she wanted to. But that would give you a whole bunch of new. Ideas and I mean, I would say, if you're going to do that, yeah. I would put I'm Lorraine Hanson on as a full-time She doesn't, member. no, 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 she doesn't want to. But, but these issue. two folks, is, I don't know Jackie Shorter, and I don't know Linda Sue. Well, let so me tell you about Linda Sue. I, have, I, have, I know her a little bit because she's now on the Garden Club board. Okay. So she lives, she's a neighbor. She lives in the Second Street condos. Oh, okay. And is here from elsewhere. So she is still new to town, but very much wanting to get involved. Okay. As is, as is... Jackie Schroeder, who has a lot of marketing stuff. So, I, I mean, I don't care one way or the other. I think if all alternates go to meetings and they become right, right. participants, sort of, that's not a bad thing. It's just a, you know, when the commission takes a, an official vote. Right. Well, as you vote. know, this Linda Sue. Uh, yeah, but, but, you know, Caroline had a nice conversation with Jackie Schroeder. I don't have... I would put her on then, Jackie Schroeder on all. Yeah, that's where I showed her, so an alternate. Okay, so, so our alternates, so let me, let me try again. So our, our five, so Al Dion is Oz, mm -hmm. Robin is Robin, mm -hmm. Paul Cass is already there, mm -hmm. Mark Kutcher is Linda Sue, Larry Larkin is Larry Larkin. Is Larry Larkin, right, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Markey is Linda McGivern, Tamara is Tamara, mm -hmm. just a new mm -hmm. date, and our Alternates are Jackie Schroeder and I guess Lorraine. Is there another yep. one? So Linda Sue and Mark. Pardon? Linda Sue and Mark. Linda Sue is Mark. Yes. Okay, I just write and I try to follow along. Yep. So that's the that's all that have shown interest. Okay. So oh, so let's we need to do dates, <coughs> terms though. Let's take the people who have been on either before or no town and give them the the, the longest appointments. Do you know so what how long of a term is this? Three years? It is three year term. So we're okay. looking normally we'd be looking to fill the people whose term expired in twenty eighteen and looking to have them go till twenty twenty one, right? Okay, so Paul and Larry are the longest ones. But they were already appointed. So they're up in twenty nineteen. Okay. So they're they're there. We're not going to change those. Okay. So so it would be who would be the tw what what you're trying to say twenty twenty. Okay. You have right? two eighteens. So those would be twenty. Two. Well, I'm going to try it again. So so we're going to 
So we, because we're completely out of whack, we're going to look to fill the three-year terms first, I think. So that, that would be up in 2021. So my suggestion, we don't have to follow it, is can we find the people who have either been on there, like maybe Tamara, Tamara. or who know the town. And Robin. Yes, and give them 2020. 20, 20, 2021. 20, 21. 21. Yes, sorry. And then Tamara is 2021. 20, 20, okay. And then. And now we should have. Now we have another 18. So Linda's. Um, oh, so that would be maybe Linda McGibbon. Well, maybe Linda McGibbon should be Mark Kucher and Linda Sue should be Dan Marquis. Then she could be a 2021 too because she's got some history, right? Yes. Okay. okay. So Linda McGibbon would be a 2021. Yeah. Okay. Linda Sue would be a 2020. Yeah. And Oz. And then Oz would be, would be a 2020. 2020. Okay. So right. And sense. you don't have to give a year for your alternates, right? The alternates right? are appointed year, okay. is my understanding, is how we manage it. 2021, 20, yes. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, and if I'm right, you can just, somebody can just say, so move, okay? Okay. So we're not going to have, we don't have to appoint Paul, Cass, or Larry Larkin. They already have seats. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for a motion that appoints Tamara Nedjikowski to a term that ends in 2021. Linda McGivern to a term that ends in 2021. Robin Aikman to a term that ends in 2021. Oscar Akbas to a term that ends in 2020. Linda Sue Solstorf to a term that ends in 2020. And Set, moved. Any questions or comments? The alternates are already here. We'll just do them in a minute. I just want to get this one through. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the regular uh, appointments, say aye. 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 Okay. And I will look for a motion to appoint uh, Lorraine Hansen as an alternate and Jackie Schroeder as an alternate. So moved. Okay, any co comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Excellent. All right, okay. um, highway Safety Committee. So these are the people who are recommended by Chief Duchamp. And they're just a one-year term? It's just a one-year term. Year. Yep. Motion to accept. So we've got, we've got uh, Chief Ducharme, who's ex officio, Kevin Hurd, who's ex officio, Michael Gillis, uh, George Gilman, who's ex officio, as Rhoda Agent, Miles England, and William Irving. Sure. Second. That's a second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Planning board. <coughs> Oops, no, 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 no. That's good. Historical. Historical. So uh, Chris, uh, who, who has been the current chair, got back to me and said everyone on who has been serving would like to continue. So the list is um, Chris Benedetto, Celia Leopold, Kristen Vallejo, Patrick Alley, Ed Charpentier. We've already appointed Michael as ex officio, so it's just those one, two, three, four, five. Motion to accept. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, planning board. So the, the first thing that I noticed here um, is that we really have no one who's who's up, and you should have at least some one person who's up. So these mm -hmm. terms are shouldn't it be one one and two? You know, each year there should it be at least one reappointment, and one year there will be two reappointments, mm -hmm. and that's obviously something out of whack. And it, it's like this. So, so actually, nobody is up. Uh, we do have a vacant alternate. Uh, Caroline is uh, interested in serving. I think Jody said she was also interested in serving. We've got uh, Brent Rowitz. Oh, I didn't see this. Oh, okay. I'm looking at this now. I did not see this. He also said he's willing to serve on Stratford Regional Planning. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, then he says he can't accommodate him then with his work schedule. Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. So this flexible can fill in where, where it needed. If we well, I mean, want to appoint him to the CIP, which would get you your seventh person. If, I mean, you're sort of. 
was this? Brent Rowitz. Oh, I'm not sure that I know what it was his last name. I'm just I'm looking at, at Brent Rowitz, and I and I didn't see I didn't see this email, and so I'm just wondering if you know you hate to people are saying look I really want to do something. Yeah. Well, we could put him on CIP if you want. Yeah. All right. So I'm well, oh, sorry. So let's take your planning board first. So we've got right. uh, maybe next year when Miles and John Hisman come up, we can give one a one year. You know, we can we can stagger them then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so right now what we're doing. And I guess Glenn is willing to yes, stay on. He is. So we are just appointing Caroline. Just yeah. Okay. So it's just Caroline to. Yeah, and Glenn. Well, we have yeah, to we have to appoint. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to appoint Glenn and Caroline Kendall. All right. That's Glenn Chase and Caroline Kendall. I have a second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Do we want to just go back before we forget? Yes, so let's do it. So let's go to CIP. Yeah. All right, so can I have a motion to appoint Brent Rowitz? Please do. So, okay, so move. Is there a second for Brent Rowitz to the CIP? Uh huh. Yes. Right. Uh oh, what's the favor to say aye? Aye. Aye. Okay. Right All right. So where are we? Let me go back now. Now we're at Recreation Committee. Right. Is it Brent or Brent? Brent. Brent, isn't it? Brent. 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 B-R-E-N-T. -E all right, so we had an email from the Rec Committee saying that all of the uh, people whose term expired in March are willing to continue on. So that's um, Kelly Anderson, Lori Hess, Jody Carnes, Celia Leopold, Kathy Rosselli, Dean Hockett, and Liberty Rowitz as regular members. Okay. So is the, is the board you so with this? Mm -hmm. So uh, Denise is there as ex officio. No, I get that. Yeah. Okay. And so Kelly Anderson is there as the basketball rep? She is, well, she's been serving as co chair and also has, has been the basketball rep. Like other committees, they will need to meet and. Fair enough. Yeah. Just, well, my question is, is not questioning. It's, it's, it's our intention wasn't then to have someone from winter rec. Remember, we wanted to do that at one point. Someone from basketball, someone from family fun day, and then well, yes. something else. Yes. So, so that's so they're not years. actually ex officios from those groups. We're not. We're not. We're not spelling it out that way. Just saying they just happen to be some of these people overlap. Yeah, I guess I'm well, not sure what you have. Um, was it, um, what's her name? Um, I mean, these are people that are actually doing the work. She was going to do be doing winter work. She was going to do the ice rink. What was her name? Uh, she was on oh, Silver Street. Um, yeah, I remember Jody bringing you. Uh, right, I, I, don't, I don't remember. I, yeah, Jody, I remember mentioning her. She's that white duplex. Um, I'm not trying to rock the boat. If this, if these are people that are willing to volunteer and actually doing the work, more power to them. I was just asking the question, were we still... Hoping to accomplish that, it's already well, a very large is, board. So, well, so all, and all I'm saying is, that there is a basketball I mean, rep or liaison, however you look at it. Right. It's it's Kelly. Sure. Then there is a family fun day liaison person, and that is right. Denise, who's now serving in another capacity as well, but right. she's there. So, okay. So I think all bases are covered. So I don't know. So we have a motion to to point these regular members. So. I'm can I just ask you a question? Yes, of course. Wasn't Kathy Roselli also a co-chair? Did that change? Mm -hmm. It did. Um, Kathy Roselli, Dee Meehawk, and Kelly Anderson were appointed at March 2017 mm -hmm. town meeting as the mm -hmm. Parks and Recs coordinator. Oh, yeah. And I, t I withdrew myself and put Kathy Roselli in my place because she was at that time affiliated more with the fire department and went to rec than I was. 
So I was hoping that she would take over the Winter Rec representative. However, so um, this is not Parks and Rec. No, right. This exactly. is not That's Parks and Recs. So Parks she and Rec has to deal with Parks and Recs another time. This is just the Recreation Committee, which is just under, you know, one of our town uh, committees. So it was I just didn't understand why they had three co-chairs. That's what, what my question was. So they were listed as co-chairs, and then it was brought to the attention that she was not acting as a co-chair. She would have been more the winter rep. Oh, okay. And right. so her title was dropped. All right, we'll just go with that. All right, so I've got the motion to, to, to accept these members as regular members as presented. Michael, I think you seconded, so mm -hmm. call the question. I'll be able to say aye. 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 And if you have elected chairs already, you should do just to, because we've only just now appointed you. We did not do elections last year. Perfect, okay. No. All right, and now for alternates for the rec committee, uh, I, uh, I'd like somebody to move, unless there's a discussion, Roxanne Carl, Dan Cullody, and Blythe Hammond. So moved. Second. And all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Uh, this is the RPD Space Needs Committee. Um, I don't, why are those highlighted? Well, Howard because one, I, I was on it twice, and two, Howard Hammond resigned last year. Oh, Howard, mm -hmm. yeah, there it is, Howard Hammond. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we've got... So he, he wasn't on it anymore, and plus I'm on as the ex officio, I have to come off as a member of the committee, because I was already on. All right, but, so you're ex officio here. Yeah. All right, so we've got Chief Ducharme and Lieutenant Uraskovich. We've already got you as mm -hmm. as ex officio. So mm -hmm. and Howard doesn't want to. Well, resign. he resigned last year. So yeah. that mm -hmm. leaves us with Bill Irving, Charlie Putnam, and Kim Saint Hilaire. Yeah. And we didn't get we got no other takers. No. So I guess I'll I look for a motion, a a motion except Bill, Charlie, and Kim. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, all right, so Stormwater Committee. This is the committee that I work with to help guide the MS4. We haven't met in a while, but we're going to have to start cracking. And so it is a shorter group, a smaller group than it had been, but I was happy to have someone say that they were interested. So the current membership is Paul Casalt and Michael LaPointe. I serve ex officio. George serves ex officio. John John Ordway sent email just today saying that he would be willing to serve on that. So I'd love to have a motion to appoint Paul Casal, Michael LaPointe, and John Ordway. Second. So moved. Sure, second. Any questions or discussions? All those in favor say aye. 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 So all those engineers. Yes, that's wonderful. You're going to have the free time, you want to Yes. All right, so here's, all right, here's the, you know, um, all right, so this is the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Mm -hmm. So we have, so Joe said he would be willing to step down. He says, if you need me, I'm here, right. I'm willing to step down. And so that leaves, so that leaves his position to fill mm -hmm. and Harold Foss and Howard Hammond, yeah. which we can continue on with. Yep. We also have email and interest from Andrea Cass and Deanna Rolo. What is the pleasure of the board? Well, I think, and we have alternates, and Gary Fieldson doesn't want to be an alternate. Correct. So, I, um, um, you know, this is an important board. I would like to not see it completely turn over. So, uh, let's see. Did you read what, um, what Joe said. I think he kind of backtracked after he said that, though. This is what but I was, if I read his email, you don't think he kind of... I thought he said... He said he had thought about it, but then I thought he, when he was giving the explanation, he kind of backed away from that. But I don't know. Well, that's the same thing we should appoint to Andrea Cass. And he had a little small. So... Andrea Cass is a member of the ZBA. You should retain Harold Foss and Howard all right, say, say it again. Um, I think you should honor Mr. Cowett's original email saying that he would be happy to step aside and let someone else do it and replace him with uh, Andrea Cass. Retain
Chastain, Harold Voss, Howard Hammond, and uh, Gary Phillips have replaced with Deanna Rolla. We don't have any expiring terms. Yes, we do. Term expires in March 2018. Joe Coet, Harold March. Voss. And oh, March of 2018. Okay. I'm sorry? John Hensman. Hensman's up 19. next year. He's 19. Oh, so he's still on. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's, let's, let me, let me see if I get this. So, what we're suggesting is that um, those people who are still in terms that are not expired are John Hensman and Ron Shabbat. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than Joe, the, the two who are expiring now, Harold, uh, Sonny Foss, and Howard Hammond, we would extend to, okay. what is it, 2021. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we would honor Joe Coet's request and appoint Andrea Cass. Mm -hmm. And then for the alternates, we Deanna. have Paul Basalt and now Deanna Rolo. Instead that, of Gary. Instead yeah. of Gary. All right, is that? And you do you think we should go back and look at that? No, no, that was just my interpretation. Okay. That's fine. All right, so I will entertain a motion to appoint Andrea Cass Harold Foss and Howard Hammond to the ZBA for terms ending in 2021. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. I would entertain a motion to appoint uh, Paul Gazalt and Deanna Rolo to alternates to the ZBA for one year term. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. And I don't have joint loss here, so because of what I said earlier, that was uh, it. I believe that's it. Unless, uh, so nice job, everybody. So, uh, so the next job is to uh, let the commissions know, change the email addresses. So I will peck away at that this week, if the board is fine with that. We need to make one other appointment, I think. Yes. yes. Move that we appoint uh, Julia Roberts to, to the trustee oh, the of the trust fund. Trust 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 Thank you. Do you need the background on that? Nope. That sounds really confusing. <laughs> To do Somebody it got yeah, all messed up in the terms. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and ran the uh, wrong one. Yep. Yeah. So, so I'll make a motion to. He just did. Oh, and then I'll second it. All right. So the motion is to appoint Julia Roberts to the to a vacancy that is on the board of trustees. And is the, did we say the term? It's yeah. only going to be for a year. If you're one year. Yeah, that's a free year. Okay. So that's so till to March 2019. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Mm -hmm. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Let them know about that too. And. Stratford Regional mm -hmm. Planning Board? Or we don't have any vacancies at the moment. No? No. Nobody's resigned. I have not resigned and Judy Nelson has not resigned. That was up until 2018. March of 2018, it says that. No, I'm on to 2019. Oh, well, then the book is inaccurate. There are several areas. Yeah. There's a lot of inaccuracies. I'm not trying to replace either of you. I'm just saying that the board doesn't have any vacancies. Yeah, I think there's a vacancy in March. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. I think there will be resignations. And I would like you to consider something. Okay. Uh, we don't have to decide right now because there are no vacancies. But, you know, there are towns who send employees mm -hmm. to the SRPC. And there's an advantage to that because they don't turn over. And they will report, you know, they will report things back. It doesn't have to be a board member. It just happens right now that I want and to be useful. It can, you know, be planners. It can be people in the community who are interested. So, so it did occur to me, especially if Carolina is going to be a part of the planning board, for us to appoint her to, if a resignation happens to SRPC, to consider appointing her to, uh, to go to be our authorized, one of our authorized reps. So, again, we don't have to decide it. I'm just putting that bug in your ear, and you can think about that. Now, to go back to our committee appointments, uh, so, so my plan now is to get all the paperwork all, change these for real, let them know, congratulate them on behalf of the board, blah, 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 set up the emails, and the, and the like. We're okay with that? Yep. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Yeah, when I get them. Well, they're all, they're on the web. I mean, they're on the Google Drive. Okay. So I'll just let you know when they're done. All right. Well, yeah, I have most of them. All right. All right, so now we're back to folder work. Please. All right. Purchase order number 
I will make purchase order number one four one. Hang on, Mike. I think there's a side conversation. Yeah, sure. Sorry. Okay. You all set? Yes. Sir. All right. Okay. Move purchase order number one four one four to B and B for B and B printing for printing of the town reports for two thousand four hundred ninety one dollars fifty cents. Second. These are for the for the town report we're all looking at. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's budget. We, we need to pay so for them. We should encourage her next year. She's been whittling this, them down. I know. I to know. submit this before, so I, I will let her know. Here you go. Before this, the purchase order should not be an authorization to pay a bill. Mm -hmm. A purchase order should be an authorization to buy. To buy. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Purchase. So this is what we get written up. Yes. Okay. Yes. You can. Um, it would be, let's find it, because we should all be familiarized with it. But it's under her, I think it's under elections. It's under her area. I'm not sure. Let me, let's uh, let me find this. Uh, so I'm just going to, because now we have the town report in little bitty pieces. So you can just look up the pieces that you like. I love it. Love it. Terms to report financial detail post appropriation. So elections. I don't know now. I think not. I think it's in think under, under our print, it's under printing and copying. Yeah. So so it's coming out of this line that's budgeted at three thousand eight hundred. Okay. All right, so this this is a big a big chunk of it. Mm -hmm. All right, so the motion is on the floor, I believe, right? It's yeah. been seconded. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm ready to call the question. All those mm -hmm. in favor say aye. 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 And the next little item we have here, we need to sign the 2018 resident tax levy. From our tax collector? State of New Hampshire, Stratford County. Thanks, to Andrea yes. Cass, collector of taxes for the town of Rollins from New Hampshire and said county. In the name of the state, you are hereby directed to collect the resident taxes in this area. We are committed to you on or before the December 1st, next December 1st, amounting in all to the sum of $16,630, no cents. You are further directed to add and to collect with all residents' taxes the penalty of $1 as incident thereto. Rolled her off the tongue. For any invoice now presented and requiring duplication and a penalty of $1 as incident thereto for any invoice not paid in full on or before December 1st next. And we further order you to pay all monies collected to the treasurer of said town at least on a bi monthly basis or receipts exceed $1,500 or more often when directed by the Commissioner of the Revenue Administration, given under our hands and seal at Rollins Street, New Hampshire. All right, so the law is here to collect the resident tax. That's yeah. part of it, right? And also the inventory penalties. Is that, was that part of it? Or nope, what? this is just, no. uh, just, just resident, resident tax. Yeah. Thank you. Tonight, 2018-017. It's a holdover from last week. I had a question about a sign going on the outside of the mill. Oh, is this the mill sign? Yeah. Yes. And you had a conversation. Tom Clark and I have talked. Yep. Yeah. So what is um, the what is your collective wisdom? Well, we're. Are you still kids? No, kids no. This, we're, we're fine. Uh, it is allowed. They're allowed to put signs on the exterior of the building, but there's also a. a we, we might have to go back and look at the. The sign ordinance, maybe clean it up a little bit. Because it says they're allowed to put a sign out front, and that should be the sign for the building, and they should all be listed. But then in another section, it says they're actually allowed to put it on the building. So it could be a little contrary. We should give them the permit. So, because right. they clearly they it's called out in, in the ordinance. And and the 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 Pellerins are also supportive of this. Yeah, it's on the outside of the building. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 2018-017, it just says Upper Mill, uh, Suite 330. Um, it 
it's a uh, $25 administrative fee to get the sign is yep. well okay. under the uh, threshold. So. So you do know that, that, that the Supreme Court is ruling on, on, on signage yeah. has an impact on us. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't know that anybody's had the time to look at our ordinance to see if we have to change anything. do with, um, I'm not going to remember the detail, but you can't restrict the signage that people put on their lawns, you know, some constitutional rights. Right. It had to do with that sort of stuff, and right. so I don't remember the details, but anyway, it, 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 it's not related to this. Right. Okay. Next. I think these are all on this side, okay. so I think it's just what, whatever you see there. Well, this is a oh, I, I like, I, do you mind my talking about no, this? absolutely not. All right, so Denise is new to some of these things. So, so uh, when we did our credit card policy, when we instituted mm -hmm. it, we said that uh, the board, at least for the near future, wanted to look at the citizen's um, invoice when it came mm -hmm. in. And so I, I authorize payment, but it, we, we can look at it. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see uh, that, you know, there's the total here, but then it's also split up by the people who have the individual cards and what they buy. So that's what it's here okay. uh, for us just to review. We don't have to do anything. Okay. Um, okay, this is um, the Seaco Storm one. This is a purchase one. Oh, yeah. Can I speak to that? Absolutely. All right. So I, I, will, um, I will put a... Can I just put a motion? Is it all right for me, or should I ask somebody else to do it, like a parliamentarian? You should have the chair, though. All right. I'm going to put it on the table for you. Have that. Thank I'll you. I'll move for it to number 1385 to Seacoast Stormwater Coalition for our annual dues of $1,000 coming out of the storm management line. So moved. All right. So, a second. So, what this is, is... Uh, it is dues to the Seaco Stormwater Coalition. The dues are managed by SWA, the Southeast Watershed Alliance. So they are the fiduciary agent. And we didn't pay any last year. We did pay them the year before, like the end of the year, and so they, they um, kept it going. And these dues are paying for collective benefits to the individual towns like they remember um, Cynthia mentioned that they and their partner have it, are res responded to an RFP it was put out by this group to do some mapping for the entire group of stormwater so that's what this is um, and I, I just want to help some manage back. part of the MS4 plan they uh, help us with, yes they help us work water and we got to reduce rate we, we did the first year time. yes they wanted two and I said look if you're going to charge Dover $2,000, you are going to charge us $2,000. Yeah. So this year, it's small enough and reasonable enough, so I don't, I'm not going to quibble about the $1,000. Okay. So that's what it is. Any other questions on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 The um, state of New Hampshire um, reappointing Forest Ranger Brian Noel um, to um, to be a Forest Ranger, and also it lists all the deputy wardens that are appointed that are all firefighters. Okay, so just an FYI. Just an FYI. Just okay. reappointing one of them. Okay. Is that somebody on our force? Yeah, oh, it must be. Fire? It yeah. must be all of these are firemen. I don't, okay. I don't know who that is, but yeah. the rest of these I know. Mark has come to us in the past and told us about it. Okay. Yeah. They just get are able to issue out burning mm -hmm. permits. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There you go. Oh, which, which stuff do you need, Mike? I need the building permit and he the, needs to the yeah. tax levy and. Well, that would be. Oh, I don't have the building permit. I think it might be in this pile. All right. I'll I just go. kind of put them off. Yeah, the that's all right. Okay. Some of this is for me. Right. Did you want to keep this? This was just for you to look at. I did look at it. I'm all set. All right, you're all yeah. set. Okay. All right. So this is. This is for you. Awesome. Yes. 
Oh, this is the day's auto salvage. Oh, yeah. um, is for him to get his dealer permit, I believe. Right? His yes. Dealer yes. So, something. so Tom, yeah. and we, we asked Tom to look at this. Is are we harming ourselves by signing this? Right. But I haven't fixed that. And I guess Tom is all right for, with yeah, us. Yeah, he said we're fine to sign yeah. it. So, yeah. Yeah. perfect. Sign off on it. We, and you gave me the wrong one. Let me see where it is. This is storm water. I need, um, I need the temp. Okay, once you get it back. They won't go to Caroline, though. Why don't, why don't we just put them in the machine? I don't want to go to my I mean, I'm happy to get it. I don't want to break down the system. <laughs> yeah. Right. Fragile. 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 System. Maybe you can find out where to put it in the current. Let's see if it's working. Oh, maybe it's underneath the green thing. Senate. Expiration. Let's see. I hear by Mauro Casanelli. Expiration date of certificates. Oh, yeah. City, oh, so city might town. Be just no, it's right here. Yeah, just okay. one person. Looks expiration like. date. I don't know what the expiration date is. I'll just sign it. Okay. It's for one year, right? So. I'll put, have Tom put in the date. Yeah. Okay. Okay, this is a, an ordinance change, um, 2017-01 plumbing. But I think that's the last page of our housing ordinance. 14 and 14, yeah. Yeah, because when I when I went to look at it, yeah. this said, authorized by the town meeting of March 17th, 2018, and given under our hands on this Monday, March 19th, 2017, or 16. Oh, so it had to be. So I said, Caroline, we think. So let's just resign it if you don't. Oh, mind. okay. Right. And she'll. she'll Should we already sign this? One we did. We signed. Oh. Yeah, this is the housing ordinance. This is the last oh, so page. Oh, okay. But okay. she had the wrong, wrong date, date. And we didn't catch it. And so it's it's important enough. You just don't want to get bitten on it, right? Something like that. Of course. Or you don't want to set up a confusion. What does this mean? Why is yeah. that not of course? Okay, this is um, for the Department of Transportation um, about inspection of red list bridge reports. Red list updated in two, for 2017. It was to Governor Sununu and must be sent to all municipal Is it just list the bridges? Is that so we have, we have, we have so our one red listed bridge is the Old Mill Lane Bridge. It's the only one, right? Yeah, well, the. the on yes, but we don't I own it. I recognize that. Yes. But in our community. Rollins for Old Mill Lane. Yeah. Yep. So, and just so that you know, Denise, just mm -hmm. to kind of bring you up to speed when these things happen. Mm -hmm. So we did apply to be put on the bridge list. Mm -hmm. And we were approved. And we have the cost estimate, which you might have seen on the CIP last year. Did we move that along to the CIP? Because, mm -hmm. so... We have the we have the cost of the the state's estimate of the cost of the bridge, and it's some huge number. But you know, our twenty percent is it's seems it's so it's small. Yeah. So, so that I'm just, it also shows just, the rounds with Dover for Oak Street on here. It's so. just all the red listed bridge within yeah. your community doesn't necessarily have to be yours. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, we neither Dover nor Rollins reclaim ownership. It's the state's bridge. That's They've tried to sell it to us for yeah for a buck. <laughs> Although John Storr did say, look, this is an important link in transportation. Sure, of course it is. Yeah. So you know we're going to try to get the state to manage it, but you know the implication is that if they don't, and it's if it's important to us, we'll have to figure it out. Just an ad, just an ad, just a job. Yeah. 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 Okay, I think that's it, because I think this all right. is all old all right. stuff, too. Excellent. So did we finish? Does it all go back in the phone and we go back to Caroline? Yeah, she, okay. she kind of this figures it out. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Figure it out. And do we still have a... Uh,
No, I don't know. I think that was left over from last week. Unless you unless you asked. I saw that it says non public for personnel. Yeah. I think that was left over. I don't have any new one. Alright, so given that any community input? Celia? Um the rank committee needs um, guidance for scholarships. We have one that's already come in and two more that have talked about and concern was raised about what would we do if we don't spend them throughout this year and I know Caroline is working with the auditor. Yeah, she was gonna be checking in with the auditor, so I don't you can check in with her and see where it is. I think we need to handle that, that in the morning. Well one of the things I had mentioned is possibly that could they do a trust um, a trust fund and put that scholarship money in there so it doesn't go away? Because if they're saying it's for a scholarship it has to be used for a scholarship. Exactly. It's a it's a and restricted so fund it's I restricted. Wonder, it's you know, a restricted with the fund. Of or having authorization to remove. Yeah. I mean, if it can go into a trust separate from the general yeah. recs. Or, um, I've got about that. Sorry about that. You know, we, uh, I'm sure there's a simple, there's a solution like this. What I usually turn to when something like this comes about is that, well, why, why do we have to rethink this? So we can ask, you know, Caroline, or you can ask other rec, rec committee folks. How do they set up? There must be scholarship funds in other towns, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. universities. So how do they set them up? Let's just figure it out. Yeah. So I would still work with Caroline, and she's she's part of a manager's list, so she can ask them. Mm -hmm. So what is the best way to manage scholarships? Because you're right, you don't want it has it's restricted. Right. You can't use it for anything else. It's being given for scholarships. For scholarships. So you've got to right. make sure that it's only used for scholarships. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to account for it. And so what is the, the best way to do it so that you can bring it forward from year to year, too, so that you're not losing it? Right, right. right. But I think the problem was that we're going to the um, general fund if it's not used. Because it that's will. What that, that's, you it know, will. so it's gonna, yeah. something's going to stop that. Yeah. So uh, if I have a question, is there more, um, more scholarship money than there is for demand? Last year we had two scholarship donations come in. Right. This year, one of our... And were they used? I'm sorry. They were used. We had enough to cover two. Last year, and one of our donors from last year came in as a scholarship this year instead of a general fund. It was designated for scholarships. For scholarships. And then we've had one donor from last year who gave scholarship already have their money set aside, say they're going to offer it. And then we've got a third company who said that they're a new company that's come to us and said we want to do scholarships. Okay. The other thought that I have that I have to share with the committee um, is you that... Don't have enough, so you don't have enough kids so to we, the demand? We, there may be. Okay. We haven't put it out yet. Okay. But the thought is, what if we don't get enough? Right. What do we do with that money? Okay. The other thought that came to me last night was that the teen camp is a third of the cost. So we could sponsor a teenager to go to the teen camp with some scholarship money too, if we don't get any teen camp. But they would have to qualify. Yep. Just like anybody else. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I, why would that even be a, an option already? Well, we separated it out um, between scholarships for teen campers and scholarships for okay. Camp Raleigh because the camps are two different prices. I see. Okay. okay. So but you could, but the fund could be combined for both. It could be. So it could be either way. Yeah. That's another way to use those funds. Um, we need guidance from the select board or um, information about the directors thought about doing a um, fun house blow up obstacle course the last week. And we know from Family Fun Day there are liability concerns and yep. state raw laws. So and we needed to know where to find that information or if somebody could forward it to us. I, I have it at home. Okay. I'll send it to so you. So what, what's there's the a new there's, there's a new, um, uh, there's a new either like a law or something that passed. Um, and bottom line, of the, it's really a liability. It's because all those fun houses that went in the air and then kids got hurt, you know, yeah. the big gust of wind and stuff. Um, you know, the, I, it, one, they have to have their own liability insurance if you're going to have this come in. But I'll, I'll get the... Um, the thing, uh, Caroline sent it to me, so she has it as well. But I'll send it to you. Okay. It's, okay. it's just, they're not, they're not safe. They're you not want safe. my immediate reaction? No. No, so. that's what I said to him. 
Yeah. Um, now, off with that hat into something else. Does the housing ordinance require a dumpster for large buildings, or does it just require a trash can? I have to go back and look at it again. Because if it's four or more. Four or more units, I think it I think it probably does say dumpster, but I'm not sure you'd have to look at it. Have to look at the because I think that would make a difference, because if you're just offering trash cans, then the tenants could get a transfer station sticker to go. But if you're offering a dumpster, they don't need it. Um, and was Jody appointed to the rec committee? She was our ex officio, but I want to make sure she got appointed as a regular. She did tonight. She did tonight. Thank you. And from a personal perspective, going to meetings less frequently makes me feel like you guys want to be less transparent and not show what you're doing as much because you're not meeting as much. And heaven forbid something, I should be out of town, then I wouldn't see as much. And Why? So, so, I mean, if, if, if the board goes to meeting twice a month, you're, you're, some, you're thinking that that would make us less transparent? How do yeah. you, I'm just curious, oh. what's the, you know, why, why? Just because the same. So, so here's, here, for example, one of the things that we could consider and we've just talked about doing is not having the board sign building permits. Now, Michael has told us that it's in the uh, zoning ordinance, but let's just say that it wasn't. So, or we have a way to manage that. So, so we don't sign building permits here. They're going to be signed by Tom Clark, let's say. Those building permits reside in a, uh, in a, a spreadsheet, which would be available to the public. So if anybody wanted to see what building permits that, we were, that were being authorized, you could look at the spreadsheet. So there's actually more transparency because, you know, rather than trying to thumb through, you know, the last two months' worth of minutes, you, if you wanted to see what building permits were being authorized, they'd be in one place on the, on the, on the web. You know what I mean? So, uh, it just, it's sort of like, maybe it's just me, and I'm not liking change, and I know it's late, but I also think that you're here to do what the citizens ask of you, and you become less accessible, in my mind, if you're not here every week as it's been scheduled. But that's just me sometimes fighting against change. Well, thank you for, for I mean, change can, is difficult. It, it kind of depends on what the change is and who's affected. But we would still be accessible by email, which we always are, and bring things up at meetings that we that come in to us that we need to attend to. So, so but keep thinking about it. I mean, we're not, obviously we're not, you know, we've got our own things here, so we're not, we're not leaping into this. You know, we're just, it's a topic of conversation. And as you pass off more duties to other people, I think that's where the transparency for me gets lost. Because we can come here, we can listen to you, have your conversations, and if you're passing off more of your duties to other people, then it's not as open as so it would be. So I'll just repeat, the thing with building permits, the building permits would be available online so anybody could, could see them. So, so, so this thing is not... You know, we're just at the beginning stages, it's not flushed out, this sort of thing. But if you would ask me what I, why, I want, why I think it's a good idea, is because we need to find people to fill our positions. This is not, we're not appointed for life, right? And the board turns over. And you want to make sure that you've got a position that, that a vast, that a lot of people in your community could be able, to, could think of themselves as filling. The meeting every Monday is a punishing schedule. It's, it is a punishing schedule. And we don't want this to just be for retired people. Or, and they're, and we're, they're not. We, you know, we've managed over these last couple of years to have a, a nice diversity. And that's a, it's a good thing for the town. right? And so you've, when we turn over, you want your institutional memory to be in positions that are going to be, stay longer than three years. And so that's why town administrators and staff are good to have so that the institutional memory is not with just a small number of people who are going to, you know, leave after a while. So those are my own thoughts and, you know, again, there's going to be plenty of conversation before we ever get yeah. to that point. And but we also are out far more nights than just one Monday night a week. Yeah. I mean, I mean uh, we're on a lot of committees. So sometimes we could be out four nights a week, depending on what's happening. But no matter what, we're here year. every blessed Monday, right. except for holidays. You know, so, so you know, it's it could it could. It's be a demand. It's demanding. Demanding. And you, you, 
you know, people's lives are different now than they were 100 years ago or 50 years ago. And so you can't make a position that, you know, where you've got a really just a very small number of your, of your population that even can consider running. You know, we... And so. I can understand that perspective with my own personal life, I'm not wanting to be tied to something a little more stasis. So, so that's, that's kind of the rationale. But losing transparency would not be what we were trying to do. That's not, the, that's not your okay. initial goal. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay, I think we're, we're to again. Yeah, by consensus, we're out of here. Let's Michael, you have something to... All right. Excellent.